billion dollar insurance company protecting the driver that just hit you. It's a mistake to play in traffic, just like it's a mistake to go against an auto insurance company all alone. When you get into a car crash, don't fight the billion dollar auto insurance companies alone. If you've been injured in a car crash, call Martinez and Associates today at 210-337-1111. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. Prom 2023 is just around the corner and you want to look your best. At Rex Formal Wear, we've got you covered. Choose from a wide range of styles and sizes and let our expert staff help you find the perfect fit. Don't wait. Come in and reserve your tuxedo today. Visit now and be the talk of the night. Do you own property that begs for a solution? Tacho Tovar and GBH Real Estate Solutions is here for that. Any condition. Any situation. Any location. Cash payment. The experts at GBH Real Estate Solutions can handle foundation repair, total interior rough-ins, or any other property need. From start to finish, GBH Real Estate Solutions will be there to make sure the job is done right. Whether the solution is a ground-up project, total renovation, or modernization, Tacho will see it through. Call GBH Real Estate Solutions today. Or visit their Facebook page to see many more examples of their fine work. Tacho is waiting to hear from you. Oh, and did we mention, Tacho buys houses. When you belong to a place as much as it belongs to you, you call it home. A place to gather, entertain, and make memories near shops, restaurants, and green spaces. A place to raise a family and grow. Life is good here and getting better. And at Brooks, we are just getting started. Live Brooks. The On Par Golf Academy at Mission Del Lago was designed and developed to offer not only the highest quality golf instruction in San Antonio, but so much more. With its experienced staff and its TrackMan indoor and outdoor training facility, On Par Golf has the capability to meet all your golf improvement needs. From its junior golf programming, to its entertainment and hosting services, OPG has got you covered. So if you're ready to take your golf game to the next level, come see us at On Par Golf. Y'all gonna see me shine, 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 shine. Walking on beams of light, 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 light. local insurance agency so sorry to hear about your accident here's a check sign this we just signed with martinez and associates <laughs> you know this isn't enough sign oh! <gasps> come on baby it's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone just like it's a mistake to go against utsa all-american linebacker trey moore voted the best law firm in senate An associate. Investment. Real estate investment team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today.
The attorneys and staff at Quezada, Larmond and Brignac PC earn their clients' trust by serving with integrity and honor. QLB is committed to getting its clients' lives back on track. We represent cases that fall into the areas of family law, probate law, civil law, HOA law, and real estate law. The QLB team stands ready to assist our clients in all litigation. Our attorneys have extensive experience representing hundreds of clients and were well versed in Texas law and well acquainted with the court systems. Whether you need a trust, will, civil, real estate, or family lawyer, you can count on QLB. Quezada, Larmond and Brignac, PC has a team of expert probate lawyers to serve you. There are two main divisions of probate law. Before one has passed, the goal is executing the right documents and legal procedures so that the estate passes to heirs without difficulty. The second area of probate law comes into play after a death, where there may be disagreement or complications with the estate of a loved one. Either way, we stand in your corner. In San Antonio, call the law offices of Carlos Quezada at 210-606-6568 or visit us in person at 2823 East South Cross Boulevard. From one idea, amazing things can come, like transforming 13 catalysts for business and career opportunities, a Southside hub to connect with neighbors, a home to live, work, learn, play, and stay to build a brighter San Antonio future together. It took great vision to see these possibilities, and at Brooks, we're just getting started. Live Brooks. The On Park Golf Academy at Mission Del Lago was designed and developed to offer not only the highest quality golf instruction in San Antonio, but so much more. With its experienced staff and its TrackMan indoor and outdoor training facility, On Park Golf has the capability to meet all your golf improvement needs. From its junior golf programming to its entertainment and hosting services, OPG has got you covered. So if you're ready to take your golf game to the next level, come see us at On Park Golf. Do you own property that begs for a solution? Tacho Tovar and GBH Real Estate Solutions is here for that. Any condition, any situation, any location, cash payment, the experts at GBH Real Estate Solutions can handle foundation repair, total interior rough-ins, or any other property need. From start to finish, GBH Real Estate Solutions will be there to make sure the job is done right. Whether the solution is a ground-up project, total renovation, or modernization, Tacho will see it through. Call GBH Real Estate Solutions today or visit their Facebook page to see many more examples of their fine work. Tacho is waiting to hear from you. Oh, and did we mention, Tacho buys houses. Y'all gonna see me shine, 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 shine Walking on beams of light, 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 light. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Texas, because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. I've been working for Harlandale for 23 years. I'm the first person they see, and I like to work with kids. Here at Harlandale, we're a team. And when it comes to delivering the kids safely to school, we all work together and we accomplish the mission. Join Harlandale ISD as a bus driver and become a vital part of our education community. Enjoy a fulfilling career with competitive pay starting at $19 an hour. Apply today at harlandale.net slash apply. Come be a part of the Harlandale legacy. 
When we got a look at the gorgeous historic Hangar 9, we knew it was the perfect place for our wedding. It provided the blank canvas we needed to plan our dream wedding, and it fit our 370 guests easily. We had family come to Brooks from all over the world. We booked over 60 rooms at the Embassy Suite. It meant a lot to have our wedding at such an important historic landmark. Revitalizing former military buildings helps us preserve our history, like the Air Force Officers Club, which is becoming Southerly Coast and Comfort. People from all over San Antonio will be able to sit back and enjoy a meal in the exact place where history unfolded. Nearby, the former Air Force Chapel will be transformed into an exciting restaurant concept. Readapting historical sites takes a little longer, but Brooks is committed to preserving their past while creating opportunities for their future. And we welcome you to Thursday night football here at Alamo Stadium. It's the Harlandale Indians who have taken this short trip here to Alamo Stadium. The Jefferson Mustangs will host them. It's a game with a lot of playoff implications here. The Harlandale Indians can win a playoff bid with a victory. The Jefferson Mustangs won't necessarily win a bid with a victory, but they will stay in the conversation and be big-time players going into week 10, or week 11, actually, the uh, 10th game of the season with a bye week. Uh, next week. So it's a big game for both of them. Uh, a loss uh, drops, them out of the, drops them out of the driver's seat and it really decreases the chances of a postseason for them. The Indians again can uh, claim a bid with a victory. The Jefferson Mustangs will stay in the conversation with their victory. We're going to take a short break here from uh, Alamo Stadium as the uh, captains go to the middle of the field to uh, flip a coin and decide who kicks and who receives. When we come back, we're going to visit with the visiting head coach, Albert Torres of the Harlandale Indians. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez & Associates. Good evening, I'm Brian Yanselson here at the Desi Martinez & Associates pregame show at Alamo Stadium. I'm here first with the visiting Harlandale Indians head coach Albert Torres. Coach Torres, your team coming off a couple of tough losses against Burbank and Alamo Heights. Chance to clinch a playoff spot. We have another chance tonight. How have you prepared your team ahead of this game against Jefferson? Uh, well, you know, we talked about the, the two losses. You know, we talked about last week was disappointing to us. Uh, you know, we worked really hard uh, for that, uh, you know, for that game, and we came out a little short. But as we tell the kids, you know, that's going to happen in life. You know, sometimes you work hard, whether it's a promotion or, or whatever it is, and sometimes things don't work out the way the way it does. And, and it's 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 getting up the next day. Face, you know, facing facing the music, so to speak, uh, and how you respond. And, and so we talked all week about how you respond makes the mark of a of a good team, a good man, you know. And so so we, we hope the opportunity today is to rise up and and uh, and show our stuff and and, and, and and react correctly. And now this Jefferson Mustang team, they have an explosive running attack more than anything. How have you prepared to attack that defensively? Well, you know what? Uh, last week, uh, Jefferson had a, had, had a great win, uh, come from behind against McCollum. So we told our kids, you know, hey, they're 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 feeling pretty good about themselves. They're, they've done a great job, and uh, Coach Carter does a, does a good job over there. Uh, but for the most part, you know, the, the top offer that they run, you know, they 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 uh, even though we're on turf, you know, they, they want to get down and dirty, and uh, they, you know, they they, they, they want to make it a real physical game. So we're going to have to match match that physicality uh, when 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 they. We, we get on defense and, and trying to stop, you know, Carter and the rest of the guys uh, uh, with a rushing attack. Now, we just found out that you have a couple of all-stars on your team, the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game, Jacob Saucedo, Zion Molina. First, how did you let them know that they got on that all-star team? Well, it's it's kind of a running joke that you know, we do, you know, we, we call them in the offices and they think they're in trouble. And <laughs> we bring them in, but we, we, we I show them the, the email and uh, and it, it's pretty it's pretty pretty neat. But that's kind of how, how, how we told them. Uh, Rulix, Really excited for those two guys. Uh, you know, we have a number of other guys that, that, that could have been picked as well, but uh, but they got the nod, and, and uh, we're really excited for them. What have they meant to your team this year? Well, you know, they, they, they've been they've been productive. You know, all, all year. You know, Zion 
Uh, not only is he being productive on, on the field, but he's been productive in the classroom. He's ranks number six, you know, in, in the uh, in the class. So that's that's always real good. Uh, you know, Jacob has been real productive in our offense. You know, whether it's throwing the ball, running the ball, he kind of gets our, our offensive going. So so really happy with those two guys. Well, thank you, Coach Torres. Good luck tonight. Thank Appreciate you very much. the time, and we'll be right back on RC Audio Sports with head coach Ed Cardenas of Jefferson. Yeah, we bring you back to Alamo Stadium. The uh, captains uh, for the teams have just met at midfield for the coin toss. The uh, captains uh, for the uh, Jefferson Mustangs, uh, number 62. Let me pull the roster out right here. Number 62 is uh, Justin Ruiz. Number 45 is Hector Munoz. Number 12, Austin Amesquita. And number 3 is Amante Carter. For the Harlandale Indians, the captains uh, tonight were Zion Molina. Jackson Garcia, Nico Rodriguez, and Jacob Salcedo. The Jefferson Mustangs won the coin flip, and uh, given the option, they opted uh, to receive. The Harlandale Indians will kick off and defend the South Gold when we come back. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we're going to visit with Ed Cardenas, the head coach of the Jefferson Mustangs. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. Good evening, Brian Yenselson here on the Desi Martinez and Associates pregame show. I'm here with the head coach of the Jefferson Mustangs, Ed Cardenas. Coach Cardenas, we were with you last week and you had a big win over the McCollum Cowboys, a come from behind victory. First and foremost, what was the feeling among the team after that W? It was a good feeling. We had, you know, the, the couple of weeks before that, it wasn't a very good feeling and uh, we needed that win. Just so momentum to finish strong, finish the year strong. Amante Carter, you used the term full throttle last week, coming back from that ankle injury, and he did just about everything. What have you seen from his progression as he's returned from that injury? Yeah, he, and you know what? He's still not a hundred percent, you know. But but he's uh, you know, he's an athlete. He's gonna he's gonna do. He's a competitor. You know, he showed a lot of heart, and hopefully tonight he'll you know he's gonna have the same 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 deal. He's gonna have a big responsibility on his hands. Austin Amesquita, he's a captain offensively, defensively, came up with a huge interception, a touchdown catch. How is he able to do everything for your team? You know, he's just, uh, he, he's one of those kids that, you know, he plays quarterback, you know, he plays receiver, he plays secondary. If you tell him to go play line, he'll do it. He's just a good kid who who plays with a lot of heart, and uh, he made some big plays for us that, that game, and yeah, you know, he was player of the game that game, and and uh, and we made him, you know, also player of the game in in our in our field house. Now, with that win over McCollum, it sets up a really big game tonight against Harlandale. How do you prepare your team and keep them calm, considering everything that is at stake? You know, we tell our kids from the very beginning, you know, this is a big game, but there's going to be a bigger game. You know, and uh, last week was a big game. But there's going to be a bigger game, and, and and we're here today. I told them the same thing. I said, look, this is a big game right here. And we need to go, you know, go after it. And, and I'm, I don't want you to do anything, anything more, anything less. Just play one, one, uh, one down at a time, one play at a time. Now, with a win, not only could a playoff spot be available, but your first winning season since 2009. How special is that for your program to have more wins than losses? It is. We talked about that at the beginning of the year, and uh, yeah, that, that was that was one of our goals too. Is, is have a winning season and. And uh, so far, we're, we're up to par right now, and, and hopefully we'll stay that way. Now, we also recently found out about the San Antonio Sports All-Stars, Amante Carter, one of them, Michael Flores, the other. Can you tell us how you let them know about that nomination? Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, that, that morning, I think we got, a, we got an email, and of course, with social media, I, I think they probably knew already. And, and, uh, but there, there's two well-deserved you know, players, you know, they've been... You know they've been playing varsity since their sophomore year, and and unfortunately Michael Flores has been out for the last three or four weeks, and uh, and but he'll be he'll be ready to go for that All Star game. And Amante, of course, you know hopefully he stays healthy, and and uh, he'll be ready too. Well, thank you so much, Coach Cardenas. Thank you, appreciate it. Big game tonight between Harlandale and Jefferson. We'll be right here with you on RC Audio Sports. And we bring you back uh, to the uh, beautiful 
Rock Pile Alamo Stadium here in San Antonio, Texas. The Harlandale Indians visiting the Jefferson Mustangs, a 14-5 AD2 football game with all kinds of playoff implications. We'll be back after this break to help you to break some of those implications down for you. Robert Biafranca alongside Brian Janselson, Isabella Deus at the tech table, Sebastian Castro handling the cameras with us tonight. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check. Sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby! It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. And we bring you back to Alamo Stadium, the Harlandale Indians uh, versus the Jefferson Mustangs 14-5 AD2 football on RC Audio Sports. We're in the Martinez and Associates uh, pregame show. We're waiting for the uh, football players to take the field. Robert Villafranca alongside Brian Yanselson. Isabella Theas at the tech table. Sebastian Castro at the cameras. Uh, Brian, good evening. Set it up for us. Good evening, Coach Villafranca. Thanks so much for having me on again today. Excited to get to talk to both head coaches before the game, as you got to see on the pregame show. Albert Torres and Ed Cardenas were great with their time, so really appreciate it. Even though they're both getting ready for such a big game, and you've done a good job, Coach, setting us up, and I want to continue that conversation a little bit. Harlandale, you made it very clear. It's as simple as they win, they're in. They come into tonight with a 5-3 and three record overall, but that important number we're looking at today is 5-2 and two in district play. So District 14, 5A, Harlandale currently tied for third place with Sam Houston, but if they win today with one game remaining, they are in no matter what. But I want to talk a little bit about Jefferson's situation because even though it's not as simple as win and in, it kind of is if you look at what's remaining. If they win today, they're four and three in district play. So they would go up to five and three and their only remaining game is against one and seven Edison. Now the Golden Bears always put up a great fight. You never know what can happen, but you have to imagine if Jefferson reels off this victory to make it two in a row against McCollum and then Harlandale, they're going to be in the driver's seat for a playoff spot. So truly, both teams right now believe that with a W tonight, they're going to be playing deeper into November. Uh, the uh, W, as you said, uh, puts the uh, Harlandale Indians in the playoffs. The W for the Jefferson Mustangs keeps them maybe halfway into that driver's seat. Uh, what we could see depend. There's so many permutations, but it's quite possible that there would be a three-way tie between Harlandale, Houston, and, High and uh, not Highlands, but Jefferson here tonight. And uh, Harlandale beat uh, Houston. Houston beat Jefferson. And for that three-way tie to happen, Jefferson would have to beat uh, Harlandale. So a three-way tie and uh, nobody owns a head-to-head -head, uh, uh, competition there. It comes down to positive points and, you know, so many permutations. But uh, should Jefferson win, you would, uh, you would, I think, the chances of that three-way tie. Of course, Harlandale would have to beat McCollum next week and Jefferson would have to beat Edison. But, uh, again, people would start to doing the math on the three-way tie and positive points and, and so forth. But again, bottom line is it's a 14-5 AD2 uh, football game. There's only nine of them all year long. Everyone is big. This one has uh, big time playoff implications. And it's been a while since the Jefferson Mustangs have been in postseason. That's right. They are looking for their first winning season and their first playoff spot since 2009. It's 2023 last time I checked, so more than a decade since those Mustangs have made the playoffs. And beyond the playoffs, just having more wins and losses in your record, that's a huge deal. And you heard Coach Cardenas talk about that. That is what's at stake tonight for Jefferson. And they're the home team tonight, so they're going to be feeling good. 2009, I always like to count back. Uh, that's about the birth year of the uh, freshman here on the, uh, on the Jefferson campus. So it's been a long time. Uh, coming uh, for the Jefferson Mustangs to even be in the conversation. We're in week, uh, we're in a, the a penultimate uh, week of the uh, regular season. We still have next week to go, but for the Mustangs to be in the conversation, uh, uh, in the playoff conversation this deep into the season, that's got to be a, a new experience uh, for uh, these kids. And something I want to touch on, Coach, you teased it a little bit, but going back to if Harlandale does lose this game, that game against McCollum, always so big, the Frontier Bowl. How about a playoff spot on the line in that one? Oh, man, the Frontier Bowl uh, is always big, uh, regardless of the uh, records. And uh, 
again, uh, uh, McCullum has, uh, McCullum's hopes that's a breakout a little bit to McCullum. McCullum will host Brackenridge uh, tomorrow at Memorial Stadium, and we'll be uh, streaming that game as well. But uh, McCullum's hopes are, although somewhat tenuous, they still have hopes of uh, a playoff uh you know, of a playoff bid, and uh, oh man, you, you've that's a mouthful, uh, Brian. A frontier bowl with uh, uh, with winner goes on and loser goes home. Yeah, that would that would be uh, that would add a little spice to the, to that uh, game. And even if the Cowboys are out by that time, you oh, know they'll love matter. to play spoiler. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. That game uh, again. Uh, anyone who uh, anyone who uh, knows the uh, Harlandale community knows how big that frontier bowl game is, regardless of uh, playoff implications or not. We're here at Animal Stadium. Uh, here, uh, the uh, attendees, the crowd uh, is going to honor the nation and our flag as the Jefferson Mustang Band uh, plays uh, the national anthem. We're going to take a short break while we do that, and uh, we'll be right back. RC Audio Sports on the YouTube. When you belong to a place as much as it belongs to you, you call it home. A place to gather, entertain, and make memories near shops, restaurants, and green spaces. A place to raise a family and grow. Life is good getting better, and at Brooks, we are just getting started. Live Brooks. Do you own property that begs for a solution? Tacho Tovar and GBH Real Estate Solutions is here for that. Any condition, any situation, any location, cash payment. The experts at GBH Real Estate Solutions can handle foundation repair, total interior rough-ins, or any other property need. From start to finish, GBH Real Estate Solutions will be there to make sure the job is done right. Whether the solution is a ground-up project, total renovation, or modernization, Tacho will see it through. Call GBH Real Estate Solutions today or visit their Facebook page to see many more examples of their fine work. Tacho is waiting to hear from you. Oh, and did we mention, Tacho buys houses. is just around the corner and you want to look your best. At Rex Formal Wear, we've got you covered. Choose from a wide range of styles and sizes and let our expert staff help you find the perfect fit. Don't wait. Come in and reserve your tuxedo today. Visit now and be the talk of the night. Y'all gonna see me shine, 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 shine Walking on beams of light, 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 light. The Jefferson High School JROTC Color Guard. With the colors, the nation's uh, colors and the uh, uh, state's colors here, the uh, Jefferson Mustang, with Mustang Band with a beautiful rendition of the uh, Star Spangled Banner in the uh, pre coin toss, the pre game coin toss. The Jefferson Mustangs won the flip and they opted to receive. Interesting to me because last week they won the toss and uh, deferred the option and uh, always. Uh, always like to get into the thinking of a, of a head coach when uh, they decide to receive or when they decide to, uh, to kick off. Tonight, the Mustangs win the coin toss, and they want the ball first. Brian? You know, I have to agree with that decision. We've seen Jefferson all season long. What do they like to do? Run the ball. They can take control of a game. 
and they could run out of quarter if you're not careful defensively. So why not get going early, receive the ball, try to set the tone, and that's what the Mustangs are going to try to do. Uh, uh, Brian, uh, to, for our uh, viewers who were not with us last week, uh, Jefferson Mustangs have brought back Amante Carter, who has been hobbled by injuries since about week two of the season. And last week, uh, he came back very close to full throttle. Coach Ed Carden has called it full throttle. And he adds a whole different dimension. And Brian, like you say, the Mustangs the trademark is a three back offense, a straight T or a power T or whatever you want to call it, a power I. They love to run the ball. But a Monte Carter in the game adds a passing dimension. It's a different offense with a Monte Carter taking the snap uh, for the Mustangs. Jose Luis Flores ready to kick it off here at Alamo Stadium. A beautiful night after a day of rain. We are ready for some Thursday night lights in San Antonio. Jefferson to receive, that is Zach Flores tiptoeing around the sideline. He's past the 20 and he eludes one tackle and he's still going past the 30. And that's where the Mustangs will begin their offensive possession. Starter, starting offense uh, for the Jefferson Mustangs uh, at uh, the guards, Justin Ruiz and David Pettis. The center is Xavier Tavitas. Uh, the tackles, Leo Guzman, Amari Owens, and uh, the tight end, Amari Owens. The tight end is Moses Castillo, Taylor Atkins, two tight ends in uh, this offense. Austin Banda is the fullback. Michael Martinez is the other fullback. Daniel Ariza, a running back, and Amante Carter will start the game as the uh, Jefferson Mustangs quarterback. I like the emphasis on the fullbacks there, Coach Villafranca. Austin Banda and Michael Martinez so often don't get the love they deserve. First and 10 from the 31. Jefferson will run it with a toss to Daniel Ariza, and he gets brought down after a gain of about six. Defensive starters for the Harlandale Indians at defensive end. J.C. Fuentes, the defensive tackles, Ramiro Vasquez and Ignacio Ceja. The other defensive end is Gavin De Luna. Linebackers, Jonathan Perez, Nicholas Rodriguez, Nathaniel Vasquez. The safeties, Luis Quintana. Tania and Jackson Garcia at corners, Rene Cantu and Robert Acuna. I would like to give a special thank you to Jefferson Mustangs for staying in the huddle long enough to give us time to do the starting lineups. Thank you, Jefferson. Mustangs will have it second and five from their own 36. Right back to Ariza, another pitch behind, and he pushes forward just short of the marker, about two yards short, so it'll make it third and two on this first offensive possession. Nico Rodriguez, the senior linebacker uh, for the Harlandale Indians, plays on the right side of the defense. Usually that run was to the defensive left, and Nico Rodriguez all over that. Uh, you're going you're gonna to hear us call his name a bunch tonight. He is a, he's a headhunter, and he's going to find that football. Mustangs taking their time, like you mentioned, giving us enough time to not only read off the starting lineups, but also for them to really burn the clock. They're in no hurry whatsoever. Play clock under 10. It'll be a third consecutive pitch to Ariza, but he is stood up, tries to push forward after that initial contact, and it looks like he did get just enough. So a nice effort by Ariza to move the chains and make it first down. A second effort and a third effort uh, did that for Ariza and the uh, Jefferson Mustangs. Contact was made at the line of scrimmage, and he was a good yard short at the initial contact. But his uh, second and third pushes got him to the 41-yard uh, line. The official says, move the chains. Daniel Ariza, all three plays for the Mustangs have been tosses to him. He comes into tonight with 12 rushing touchdowns, over 900 yards on the ground. He is a threat back there. Carter, this time will fake the toss and keep it himself using those fullbacks as blockers ahead of him. And you see that positive momentum he gets ahead of him, a gain of seven on first down. We saw that play be very effective against McCollum last week. It's a counter keeper. Uh, Amante Carter will open up to one side and give that uh, pitch fake and then come back counter to the other direction. He's hoping to use the uh, pursuit of the defense uh, to get them in good blocking angles for his offensive line. And then he's going back against the grain with uh, the line. Hopefully, if it, the play works, uh, uh, having good blocking angles. The Mustangs this year combined 16 for 44 in the air. That's right, just 16 completed passes. They do most of their damage on the ground. They go to Ariza yet again. And look at the patience he is showing, not rushing anything, just like they're not rushing their play calling. And it's another Mustang first down. Uh, and again, to uh, emphasize the difference that Amante Carter makes in this offense, he, in one game, he more than doubled uh, the number of yards passing that uh, Jefferson had in the first seven ball games. He comes back in game eight 
and the Jefferson Mustangs offense all of a sudden uh, doubles. Uh, as uh, Brian Janselson calls a play, and of course, as you see it on our screen, uh, it is it is uh, correctly called a pitch. It is a pitch, but the, the play is designed to go between tackles or between tight ends, as you will, as, uh, if you will. The pitch is to get the uh, running back uh, plenty of time to get a read and find a, find a gap. They fake it once again. Carter getting so used to doing that. He's only going to get two on that first down run, though. Nathaniel Vasquez, a senior linebacker for the uh, Harlandale Indians, uh, uh, really bringing it on that play. And Monty Carter stood up at the line of scrimmage, and uh, Vasquez uh, just unloaded on him. And uh, he's over here on the sideline uh, getting the play uh, from Coach uh, Cardenas, as they, as they do. As you said, this is one of the ways that they burn clock, is that they, they, they run the ball a bunch, so the clock is running all the time, and then they use... Uh, they're always down inside of 10 seconds in the play clock. We're uh, under six now. Second and eight from the Harlandale 45. Mustangs running it well on their first possession. Ariza Met near the line of scrimmage. He m pushes forward for a gain of one, but it'll be third and seven. So the first real test on third down for the Mustangs. First real test, the uh, first time that we see uh, third and long. We saw the Mustangs last week again against the uh, McCullum Cowboys convert on several third downs and a couple of fourth downs in that game to uh, to, to win the game finally in the, in the uh, final minutes of that game, if not the final minute. But uh, the Mustangs here at the Harlandale 44-yard line, I would not be surprised if Coach Cardenas and the offensive brain trust for the Mustangs is already seeing this as four-down territory. We have not called Austin Amesquita's name yet. He's not on the field for this third and seven from the Harlandale 44. Into motion goes Ariza. Carter following him, and he's got space. First down, Jefferson, as Carter takes care of business himself. The first time uh, this game that the, uh, that the Mustangs come out of that double tide and power eye, this time they had uh, Daniel Ariza in, uh, in, a, in a wing position out here, and they brought him back towards the ball. Uh, it looked like it may have been some, a jet sweep action. Uh, Monte Carter taking uh, the deep snap on that play instead of taking the snap from under the center. So third and seven, the uh, Mustangs prove uh, up to the task on that third and seven opportunity to move the chains. And what a wonderful block there by number 43, Austin Banda, one of those fullbacks in the stack eye formation, getting out into space and allowing Carter to get that first down. First and 10 from the 36, using every ounce of that play clock. Ariza turning the corner. He's got nothing but green turf ahead of him. One man to beat, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. However, a flag thrown in the secondary, so let's hold on for a moment. Penalty flag back here at the 28-yard uh, line, and the uh, Mustangs not moving. Uh, to the extra point uh, position. So again, uh, uh, body language would tell you that that one's gonna come back. Uh, the uh, the uh, white hat there, the referee of this officiating crew will uh, let us know. He's pointing towards uh, Jefferson and talking to Coach Cardenas. So that is that that's, uh, that play, that is a penalty against the Harlandale Indians. Uh, a chop block. Or, or, or contact below the waist against the defense. That's a very rare call, but a defender must have come in to try to clear out the uh, interference uh, for the uh, Jefferson Mustangs, and he came in low. You don't see that call very often, uh, but uh, of course the uh, Mustangs will decline that and take the result of the play, which is, which is a touchdown. Lining up now for the extra point are the Jefferson Mustangs. Steven Morell is on to make it 7 nothing. What a fun moment that was. Everybody thought that was going to be on Jefferson, but then Coach Cardenas found out at the same time that we did that it was, in fact, a touchdown. Extra point is up, and it's good. The Jefferson Mustangs start the night with a touchdown. So they are up 7 nothing on the Harlandale Indians. You're watching high school football on RC Audio Sports. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. 
Welcome back to Alamo Stadium where the Jefferson Mustangs, a methodical 70-yard drive, taking almost six minutes of this first quarter clock to jump ahead 7-0. It was capped off by a 33-yard touchdown run courtesy of Daniel Ariza. Big play on that drive, Brian, was Daniel Ariza bouncing that outside uh, where he hadn't done that before. All the attack had been between the tight ends, and uh, this time he... He met a lot of defenders there, and he bounced to the outside. The edge wasn't there for the Harlem Indian defense, and uh, Raiza won the race uh, to the uh, corner, and uh, the 15-yard uh, penalty will be assessed at the kickoff. The uh, Jefferson Mustangs will kick from the Indians, 45. A lot of times you see special teams uh, taking a shot at uh, an onside kick here or a lob, so the Indians better be alert. Absolutely, Steven Morales. Going with that onside kick, Indians bobble it at first, but it looks like it was recovered by number 88, Isaiah Hernandez. So an early crisis averted by the Indians, and they will take over on their side of the field. Offensive starters uh, for the Harlandale Indians, uh, wide receivers Isaiah Hernandez and Michael Palomino, the tackles Andres Reyes and Rene Casillas, the guards Adalberto Reyes and uh, Joe Rodriguez, the center Nathaniel De Luna. The wide receivers on the other side of the field, Joseph Esparza and Roger Dominguez. The running back is Zion Molina, and the quarterback is Jacob Salcedo. And Jacob Salcedo will be the man in shotgun to start the game. Number 11, the senior all-star. Five wide receivers set. He'll look for a bubble screen, but that is blown dead before it can even get going. The far official signaling to the uh, referee, it's false start against the Indians. That'll be a five-yard penalty and will replay first down. The uh, starting, starting uh, defenders for the uh, Jefferson Mustangs, Amari Owens, Justin Ruiz, the defensive ends. Jared Portales is the defensive tackle. Linebacker Cyrus Cardenas and Hiram uh, Valenzuela, Hector Munoz, the Indians ready to snap the ball. Going with a similar formation, except this time there's a man in the backfield with Saucedo, first and 15, and it'll be a handoff to Zion Molina. You're going to hear that name a lot. He just pushes forward for a gain of one. So second and 14 coming up for Harlandale. Rounding out the uh, defensive starters for Harlandale, the safeties, Gavin Lopez, Steven Salazar, and Uriah Bocanegra. The uh, corner is Austin Amesquita. Right away backed up against the chain. Second and 14 from their own 28, Harlandale started this drive with a false start and a one yard run. Saucedo steps back to pass, has plenty of time. Now stepping up in the pocket, has to escape a sense of urgency there. And he completes the pass downfield to Michael Palomino. Palomino gets all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Oh, let's take another look at that uh, if we can. Uh, Jacob Saucedo. A three-man rush from the uh, Jefferson Mustangs. The offensive line able to hold them off and allowing Jacob to extend the play. And uh, Michael Pal Palomino well defended. Uh, it was a 50-50 ball at the end of that uh, pass, but he came up with it. And nobody between him and the end zone just like that. In a couple of plays, the Harlandale Indians, a quick strike offense, uh, have uh, narrowed the uh, deficit 7-6. to six. The extra point team is on the field. Well, all righty then. I guess we're seeing what kind of game it's going to be. Jefferson trying to use the clock, and Harlandale going with quick strikes on offense. We're an extra point away from having it all tied up just like that. Jose Luis Flores, clean snap, clean hold, and a clean kick makes it 7-7 at Alamo Stadium. You're watching high school football on RC Audio Sports. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. You're gonna see me shine, 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 shine. Walking on beams of light, 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 light. We bring you back to Alamo Stadium. The Harlandale Indians have just uh, scored on a big pass play from Jacob Salcedo to Michael Palomino. We're all tied up. Uh, three plays, uh, two plays was all it took for the Indians to uh, get downfield and score. We uh, welcome Victor Alvarez in our uh, chat room there. Let's go Indians class of uh, 2007. He says, thank you for subscribing to uh, RC Audio Sports on YouTube. Uh, we know you subscribe because you have to subscribe to chat. 
Nice little catch there. We love it when people subscribe so we can interact with them. Here is seven to seven at Alamo Stadium. The kick from Harlandale to Ariza. Ariza, the recipient of that touchdown on the first drive, but he has stood up at the 20 where Jefferson will start their drive. The uh, Harlandale Indian defense really uh, did not have a, a lot of time to regroup there. It was a quick break as the, uh, as the Indian offense uh, scored in a couple of plays. It was a, a false start in there to give uh, Coach uh, Molina, the defensive coordinator, and uh, this uh, defensive squad a little bit of time on the sideline to catch a breath and uh, regroup strategically. Uh, the Mustangs with their uh, grind it out offense can be a fatiguing offense to defend. Speaking of fatigue, Ariza, who got every single carry on that previous drive except one now on the sideline, but it's Zach Flores who takes over, and Flores nearly loses it, but he's able to jump on top of it to keep Jefferson with the ball. Nathaniel Vasquez and Nicholas Rodriguez uh, on top of the play after a six-yard gain, uh, but uh, the ball almost came loose, and uh, boy, that would have been disastrous uh, for the uh, Mustangs to give the ball up uh, in uh, with such a short field to a potent Harlem Indian offense. That was a big story last week for Jefferson. Their 28 to 24 win against McCollum. They were the beneficiaries of an interception, a fumble near the goal line that the Cowboys couldn't cash in. And so they don't want to lose the ball here, especially in this part of the field. Second and four from their own 26. Continuing to tick that clock all the way down. Counter keeper by Carter. And Carter jukes left and look at that space. Carter past the 40, now past the 30. He is not running out of steam. Touchdown, Mustangs. So the Mustangs uh, proved to be a quick strike offense as well. Uh, backside gap on the center, not there. Counter keeper uh, for uh, Monte Carter and uh, nice angles that uh, the uh, the counter gave uh, the uh, Jefferson Mustang offensive line when uh, Monte Carter came through. It was, uh, boy, you almost could call that touchdown uh, 65 yards away. Nobody uh, touched him. Unbelievable display of offense here at Alamo Stadium. We told you these two teams are playing for a lot tonight and they are not wasting any ounce of energy. It is just 4.14 left in the first quarter, yet we've already had three touchdowns, including two of over 70 yards. Jefferson, 14, Harlandale, 7. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. Get ready. Grab it, grab it, let's go. Go, Victor. Right. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. Well, we've described the Jefferson Mustang offense as a grind it out a clock and time eating uh, offense. But when you've got a Monte Carter in your backfield, you can score from just about anywhere. And as a Monte Carter showed that. So Jefferson Mustang, a quick strike offense with a two play uh, with a two place uh, 70 yard drive, an 80 yard drive, a, a two play 80 yard drive, the touchdown, a 73 yard uh, carry uh, for a Monte Carter. Uh, for the score. 14 to 7 is the score. Four minutes and 14 seconds left in the first quarter. Mireles with the pooch kick. Fair catch called as he goes out of bounds. Once again, Hernandez doing the work on special teams. And the Indians will have good field position to start this drive off. We visited about this uh, last week. Uh, Brian, you and I had the uh, Jefferson McCullum game at Memorial Stadium last week. And the kicker, uh, is that Jose Luis Flores uh, for Jefferson? That's for Harlandale, the kicker is Mireles. For Mireles Jefferson. for uh, Jefferson, uh, quite a repertoire of kicks. We saw an onside kick that was almost successful. He's got that little lob kick as well. And uh, again, as precise as he is, um, boy, it's just like, it's almost like a soccer pass. And uh, boy, the uh, the Indian uh, return kickoff return team has got to be alert for all of those uh, kicks in, in his repertoire. Well, only two plays for Harlandale on offense. Didn't give us much time to really talk about their guys. It'll be Zion Molina carrying it on first down. Gain of about two to make it second and eight. 
But this Harlandale offense is a lot more balanced, typically, than Jefferson when you look at their season numbers. 1,400 yards on the ground, 1,700 yards in the air. You never know what it's going to be for the Indians, and that keeps defenses off balance. A very balanced offensive attack uh, the Indians run. Saucedo, another empty backfield all the time in the world. Now he faces the pressure, rolling right, and he's going to tuck it and run. First down, Harlandale as Saucedo mimics Carter, takes it into his own hands and gets a first down. Uh, three play, I mean, a three, a three man uh, defensive front for the Jefferson Mustangs. The uh, uh, Indians have tried a couple of times to run against it. They've defended it very well, but I do think that I spy a spy on the uh, Jefferson Mustangs uh, defense. I think it's a three man rush and one of those linebackers assigned to spy uh, Jacob Saucedo. That time they weren't able to get to him. First and 10 from the Jefferson 47. Into motion goes Esparza. He needs three or four Mustangs in the backfield and he is brought down. First to the tackle was Gavin Lopez for the blue and red. Uh, a jet sweep uh, handoff for uh, Joseph Esparza. Uh, but uh, that play is not going to go if the uh, defense uh, gets uh, penetration through uh, the offensive line and into the backfield. Immediately on the handoff, Joseph Esparza was retreating and giving ground. And, uh, that's, uh, that, that's a very difficult play to do if that's uh, how it starts. Very difficult play to execute if you start it that way. Keep an eye on Hernandez and Palomino stacked up at the bottom of your screen. Saucedo pulls back the play action. Now he keeps it himself, shoulders down and dives forward. Nice gain on second and 12 will make it third and manageable for the Indians. Jacob Saucedo and the Hardendale Indian offense uh, run a uh, read option offense in the run game. Jacob Saucedo reading uh, the defensive end and uh, he'll keep it if the defensive end uh, takes the uh, dive. That time he did, good read for Jacob and a, a nice pickup for the offense. Third and three from the 40, could be four down territory. Faking the snap there was Saucedo. Now he gets a look at what the defense has to offer. Takes a glance back at his own sideline. Lots of time on the play clock still, just now hitting 10. Molina in the backfield. It'll be a short toss over to 81 Palomino, and he makes that first man miss before gaining more past the first down marker. It was that initial contact that the Mustangs couldn't bring down, and Palomino, like he did in the first drive with the touchdown, keeps the drive going. Uh, the uh, Burbank uh, Bulldogs last Thursday in their game against the Harlandale Indians very much neutralized Palomino. We did not call his name much, but already two big plays uh, for the uh, wide receiver here uh, for the Harlandale Indians. Number 81 is Michael Palomino. Again, spreading out that offense are the Indians. Five wide receivers for Saucedo to choose from. Steps up in the pocket and a wide open Esparza gallops into the end zone. Touchdown, Indians, as these two teams just strike back at each other. And take another look at that. Jacob Saucedo uh, doing a good job of navigating around that three-man rush and finding the space that he needs to deliver downfield. Joseph Esparza runs routes about as well as anybody, and uh, he found, uh, he found a, a vulnerability in the uh, Jefferson Mustang defense. It was pitch and catch and a touchdown for the Harlandale Indians. Indians again show as if they're gonna go for a two, but then they back out into their point after formation. Hold by Saucedo, Flores puts it up and through to tie this game once again. 131 left in the first quarter. We're all tied up at 14. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. Join the legacy today and become a teacher for Harlandale ISD. Here at Harlandale, we offer many benefits for you and your family, competitive pay, and a starting salary for teachers of $58,000. We offer teacher stipends for teaching bilingual classes, coaching, special education, and more. Here at Harlandale, we are inspiring our students to be the change. Join us today and make a difference tomorrow. Apply now at harlandale.net slash apply. Welcome back to Alamo Stadium, where both sidelines very vocal in their instructions during that short break, especially on the Jefferson sideline. You got to imagine defensive coordinator Eddie Moreno is not happy with those two drives they've allowed. It's 14-14 with 131 in the first quarter. 
Coach Moneno has uh, probably emphasizing the fact that they're only rushing three. They've got eight in cover, and uh, they've given up two big pass plays. So you don't want to see that uh, if you're if you've got eight men in a cover. The one good thing for the Mustangs, their offense hasn't missed a single beat. Flores here bobbles the receive receiving of the kickoff, and he's going to be dragged down before the 10-yard line. Not a good look there for Zach Flores, who has bobbled the ball a couple of times tonight for the Mustangs. Uh, the ball looked like it may have been, uh, may have gone into the end zone, and had the Mustangs let that go into the end zone, it would have been a touchback, and they'd start this drive at the 25-yard line with the decision to bring it out and the good cover by the Harlandale Indian uh, return team. Uh, the uh, Mustangs will start this drive 91 yards away from Pater. Maybe it's just a setup though, Coach Villafranca. I mean, they started their last drive on the 20 and then Monte Carter went on a 74 yard trot to the end zone. So they're just making it harder for themselves to score and make it look better. Okay, plain possum. Okay, I, 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 I can see that. I, I can see where that might be the case. We'll see. Now, definitely not trying to do that, but they will start their drive from their own nine yard line. It has been clicking for the Mustangs so far. That stack eye formation, two fullbacks behind the quarterback and the halfback several yards behind them. Here it's Ariza who will get the first carry, pushes forward for a gain of just about one, maybe two. For the uh, first quarter here, and we're approaching the one minute mark of the uh, first quarter, it has been the Jefferson Mustang offensive line that's uh, winning the surge. And in, a, in an offense like the Mustangs uh, run, uh, that's gonna play a big part. Another thought that I had, Brian, is that uh, we have a, a high scoring game like uh, we're having currently, 14 to 14. You're looking at 56 points if we keep it this at this clip but uh, uh, 56 for each if we keep it this clip. But when you have a high scoring game like this, there's a added pressure on the kicker to be perfect or as close to perfect as it can be on extra points. Carter lines up under center, goes the opposite direction with Ariza this time. First time he's gone left, and that'll be likely the last play of the first quarter as the Mustangs have seemed to be in no hurry getting to the line of scrimmage. Well, there's only 25 seconds left in the quarter. And uh, yeah, I don't think the, I think the uh, Mustangs will be happy to burn those uh, 25 seconds. The Harlandale Indians uh, have uh, struck uh, uh, quickly twice the Mustangs on a long drive and they struck uh, pretty quickly on one of their drives. We're 14 to 14 as we watch the uh, clock wind down on the first quarter, 14 points apiece. It's a big 14-5 AD2 football game with playoff implications uh, on RC Audio Sports. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. And we bring you back uh, to Alamo Stadium. We're all tied up after a full quarter of play. The, uh, the uh, Jefferson Mustangs have scored on both of their possessions. The Harlandale Indians have answered on both of theirs. This is possession number three for the uh, Jefferson Mustangs. It started inside the 10 yard line. They've gained uh, three, maybe four positive yards. And we're looking at their second, uh, third and long situation this evening. Mustangs started this drive from their own nine, currently third and six from the 13. We have not called the name of Austin Amesquita. He is out there this time to start the second quarter. Carter fakes the give to Flores, looking for Amesquita, who is triple covered, and there's a flag thrown on that coverage. Interception on the back end of that, but I think this is gonna be pass interference on the Indians. Uh, two flags uh, thrown on the uh, throw, two flags thrown on that play, uh, where that second flag was thrown. You would expect that to be some kind of contact 
on the uh, on the uh, catch on the pass. But Brian, I think you did you say there was a flag before that? Yeah, there was a flag thrown as Amiskita ran his route. He was triple covered down the field, and the penalty marker came out immediately. We'll take a look though. The two live ball penalties, and if uh, they're one, if they go to each side, of course they will offset. We'll replay the down. Let's see what we have. It's holding against uh, the Indians. So they're going to say that contact came before the ball was thrown by the quarterback, Carter, making it holding instead of pass interference. Either way, it'll be a first down for the Mustangs. Uh, a first down for the Mustangs. Uh, so it's the second time if you convert it, if uh, not uh, on their own with the help of a penalty, it's the second time that the Mustangs have converted on third and long. And uh, if you're rooting for the Indians, that's not uh, something that you were hoping to see. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous to allow the uh, Mustangs to convert on those third and longs. You want to get them behind schedule, and then you got to seal the deal when you've got them there. But the Mustangs uh, have not been held on, on either of their third and longs. Toss back to Zach Flores. He goes left, darts forward for just a couple. Second and long coming up for Jefferson. Uh, the Mustangs uh, use all kinds of formations, although it looks like a very basic uh, power eye. They move that line around. That time it was a tight end over, and they had four men on this side of the line of scrimmage, only two on that side. And you have to be careful with that as well because a tackle over, and you can have on the other side, you can have an eligible receiver in the tackle spot. And sometimes you get, uh, sometimes that one gets lost in the uh, shuffle, and it's tough to defend. And so the uh, Arlington Indian uh, defense has got to be uh, alert to that. But a lot of a lot of different formations. The, this, the offense seems simple, but it is complicated. Back to Carter. Had to go down to get the snap. That made him lose a little bit of rhythm. Still able to find a couple to make it third and medium. Same formation uh, to the other side. I'm going to call it a tight end over. Uh, the, I you know, couldn't see the numbers, but uh, they had four men on the right side of the center, only two men on the left side of the center. And both times, uh, the uh, Jefferson Mustangs have gone uh, to the uh, power side, uh, hoping that the uh, Arlendale Indian defense does not align itself well to it. Another uh, third and long situation, the second of this possession, the uh, Mustangs converted on their last opportunity. They've been perfect so far. Third and six from the 27. Carter direct snap, looking deep. Now has to hesitate, being rushed towards the sideline, and he's gonna just step out of bounds. Harlandale defense led by number 30, Nicholas Rodriguez, ensuring that Carter had nowhere to go. Amante Carter uh, uh, stating his case to the officials, and he says that uh, the, the referee, I mean, he says his wide receiver was being held, and uh, he's complaining, so uh, didn't start off on a real, uh, didn't start off on real good terms, and then he kind of tosses the ball away and the flag goes up, uh, very, yeah, that's gonna be a delay of game against the uh, Jefferson Mustangs. It's a dead ball foul, so it'll, uh, the, the play will count and it'll be fourth down. And instead of fourth and six, it'll be something like fourth and 11 now. Uh, Amante and the Mustangs are probably lucky uh, in that situation that they weren't called for an unsportsmanlike uh, conduct. That would have been an even more severe penalty of 15 yards. The punt team is on the field and uh, the uh, Cowboys, I mean, the Arlington Indians ready to receive. Uh, Mesquita takes his time, a dangerous decision there. It'll roll in front of Isaiah Hernandez. He picks it up and crosses the 40-yard line. Excellent starting field position for the Harlandale Indians on their third drive of the evening. So you add a little bit of insult to injury after not converting that third down. Jefferson has a penalty called on them, makes that punt go a little deeper than they would have hoped. And now the Indians will start the drive on the opponent 40 yard line. Uh, an easy bounce uh, for the return man uh, to get. Uh, Brian, I couldn't tell if that was 88 or 86. If it was 86, it was Ethan Theus uh, that uh, got the return. But it, it, not much of a risk as that, that was a very clean bounce. He picked it up, scooped it up, and got it to the Jefferson Mustang 40. A, a, a very, uh, very advantageous uh, field position for the Indians. Indians starting from the 40-yard line. They've been two for two on touchdown so far. Three wide receivers stacked up on the bottom of your screen. They go the opposite way, a toss on the option to Molina. Molina makes the first Mustang miss, and he's got a first down. Gavin Lopez couldn't bring him down, and Molina took advantage. Well, you can't run that uh, pitch option any better than uh, Jacob Salcedo just did. 
held onto the ball to the last fraction of a second, drew a lot of defense as Zion Molina out there by himself. The pitch went, turned the corner, and uh, that was a plus 10 uh, uh, carry there for a first down. Indians just doing an excellent job distracting the defense. You mentioned those three wide receivers on the bottom, so they go the complete opposite way and get a first down from the 28. They go with the read option kept by Molina, and Molina is having himself a drive, pushes forward for about six to make it second and four. That's the best uh, play uh, through uh, between the tackles for the Harlan Indians so far. They've uh, they've tested that three-man line, uh, but they've got the uh, Jefferson Mustangs support very well with the linebackers. Uh, really the best play between tackles that the Indians have had so far uh, this game. Harlandale showing a little bit of pace here on this drive as well. Second and four from the 22. Into motion goes Palomino. Now a screen, but over the head of Molina. Salcedo takes a big hit on the back end as well, but it'll be third and four for the Indians. Uh, a screen pass was the right, uh, right call uh, for that situation. A delayed uh, stunt uh, by the uh, Jefferson uh, Mustangs uh, caught the uh, Harlandale Indians by surprise, and I think that was number 40 that got there, Cyrus Cardenas, uh, applying the pressure, and it just that was a very well-run defensive play. Empty backfield on third and four. Indians go with the bubble screen to 82, Roger Dominguez. He's weaving his way through traffic, and it'll be first and goal for the Indians. Another great play call by Harlandale. Roger Dominguez is one of uh, Jacob uh, Salcedo's uh, favorite targets. He's a multi-sport athlete, great hands. Uh, you'll see here uh, wearing football pads and in a basketball uniform as well. Roger Dominguez, excellent hands, will catch the ball on first touch. First and goal for the Harlandale Indians. Really a three-headed receiving attack. Esparza, Palomino, and Dominguez for the Indians. They've got the bulk of their yardage and touchdowns. First and goal from the seven. Pulls back on it, does Saucedo, and finds Esparza. Not one of those three-headed monsters, but nonetheless, two touchdowns tonight. So Joseph Esparza adds to his total and puts the Indians up for the first time tonight. Well, I was going to say, Brian, uh, before he scored, I was going to say that might be a four-headed monster. And Joseph Esparza uh, made the point uh, for us. Uh, four very dangerous wide receivers with an excellent quarterback. The uh, Harlandville Indians uh, put on the field, and uh, they've uh, uh, they've really uh, moved the ball well uh, through the air uh, so far this game. Indians make the Mustangs pay for that quality field position. They started the drive at the 40, and they wasted little time getting back into the end zone. Three for three, and they're up. 20 to 14 as that extra point is no good. So keep an eye on that point. Could be important later on. 8.55 to go in the second quarter. Harlandale 20, Jefferson 14. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. For the first time tonight, the Harlandale Indians see themselves on top of the Jefferson Mustangs. A score of 20 to 14. No good on the extra point, but they're going to be happy with the drive. It was 40 yards capped off by a seven yard touchdown reception by Joseph Esparza, his second of the evening. On the extra point, it wasn't the cleanest snap that you'd see, but it looked like the ball might have gotten on the tee, took the timing off of the kick, and it was uh, unsuccessful. Three return men back for the Mustangs, but all three of them will see that one sail behind the end zone. Touchback and the Jefferson Mustangs looking to get back in rhythm offensively. They scored on their first two drives, but they were stalled out a little bit on that last one, Coach. Uh, they certainly were. It's the first time uh, in, uh, in the ball game. I believe that was the Mustangs' third possession and the first time that the Mustangs uh, uh, were not able to end the uh, drive on a, a score. The uh, Harlandale Indian defense forcing uh, a punt on, on the drive and uh, had real good position to, field position to start uh, their, own, uh, uh, their own possession. 
But uh, again, uh, the uh, uh, the keep in mind uh, that the Mustangs had the first uh, touch. They received the kick, so they've got one more possession now than the Indians do. But the Indians have the lead. That's key. They've made a stop. The Mustangs haven't. Daniel Ariza back in the game as that halfback. It's been Flores on the last couple of runs. Ariza did excellent on the first drive, but he is stopped after a gain of two. So the Indian defense adjusting to this stack eye offense, putting all 11 defenders pretty much in the box, not acknowledging the passing threat, because we've only seen one pass tonight. But we've got an injured Mustang on the field, so we will take a break on RC Audio Sports. You're watching High School Football at Alamo Stadium. Get ready. Grab it, grab it, let's go. Go, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio, three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. Perez, the injured Mustang, helped off the field, but looking good, walking mostly on his own power. Second and eight after that break, and look at Amante Carter go. Not breaking a sweat, here he goes again. Carter down the sideline, he is dragged down, no! Touchdown, Mustangs, Amante Carter does it again. Let's take another look at that again. Uh, uh, Monte Carter breaking through the line of scrimmage, and once he gets to that second level, he's got some great speed. Uh, Ed, Coach Ed Cardenas tells us that he's not 100%, but I'm going to call it 99.999%. Uh, just uh, one last shot uh, at, uh, at a tackle there inside that 10-yard line, but he was not uh, to be denied. Monte Carter with the second long touchdown of the night the mustangs have proven themselves to be a quick strike offense here tonight i mean robert acuna number 12 for harlandale dove on his back tried to bring him down i thought he might have had him but that is just how strong and how quick amante carter is mustangs back on top 21 to 20 you're watching exhilarating high school football on rc audio sports Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. You're gonna see me shine. Shine, shine, shine Walking on beams of light, 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 light oh, 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 oh. Alright, well, Amante Carter has a 74-yard touchdown run and a 73-yard touchdown run, and we are still 
in the second quarter with eight minutes and 15 seconds left to play. Coach Villafranca, we are displaying and witnessing a show tonight. It is a show. I'm looking up in the uh, bleachers here to see if it's not maybe the class of 73 or the class of 74 here as a reunion. But boy, 73 and 74 yards. Amante Carter has been golden uh, tonight uh, for the Jefferson Mustangs. Back on top they are, and that extra point was good. So the uh, Mustangs 21, Harlandale 20. Another short kick off the leg of Mireles. It'll scamper all the way back, and having to recover it is Palomino, who wanted to just let it go out of bounds. Mustangs trying to recover. Palomino has nowhere to go. Does well to get back to around the 16, but these kicking teams are throwing each other off balance. Uh, the I think Palomino was, uh, I, I, from here, I, was, I thought he had made the right decision. It looked like the ball was going to go out of bounds, and uh, no one near it, so he was kind of escorting the ball a couple of bounces, and it redirected itself right up the field it didn't go out of bounds and it's a live ball after it has traveled 10 yards so uh, Palomino had no choice as the uh, Jefferson Mustang return team was zeroing in on it at that point he had to pick it up and uh, he was only able to get back to the 17 maybe the 18 yard line so the Harlandale Indians starting in great field possession and field in great field position on their last possession this time not so much yeah, the referees move it up to the 17, but that doesn't make it a whole lot better for the Indians. However, they haven't shown that they're going to be stopped easily. They go right back to Molina, but this time the Mustangs were ready. Number 11, Uraya Boca Negra among those to make the tackle. Boy, that three-man front, uh, Brian, is so tempting to run against, but I've got to tell you, kudos to the uh, Jefferson Mustang uh, uh, three-man front and their linebackers the uh, Harlandale Indians who are usually a very good running team have had very little success against uh, this three-man front Harlandale just does such a good job throughout the year running and throwing you never know when it's going to come nearly 1500 yards of both this time it'll be a passing play having to step up in the pocket Saucedo trying to wiggle his way out of trouble but the Mustang stop him after a gain of just about one Best looking drive defensively so far for Jefferson. Can they follow it up on this third and long? Number 40, an outside linebacker for the Jefferson Mustangs is Cyrus Cardenas. And once again, a little bit of a delayed rush. Uh, the Indians did not pick it up. They flushed uh, Jacob Salcedo out of the pocket, something he didn't want to do. He was hoping to let those pass routes uh, develop. Esparza has been the go-to receiver tonight. He's in the slot. Saucedo has third and eight from his own 19. There's some rush. Number 45, Munoz nearly gets there. Instead, a tackle in the open field by Lopez. He stops Esparza and a big moment for Lopez personally. He's been beat a couple of times, unable to make the tackle, but he makes a big one there. Joseph Esparza tried to go low and escape uh, the, uh, the clothesline, if you will, uh, on the uh, tackle, but unable to do so. He was uh, brought down and this will be the first time that the Jefferson Mustangs have stopped the, the uh, Harlandale Indians and a force a punt. So one stop for the Harlandale Indian defense, one stop for the uh, Jefferson Mustang defense, and it's three scores apiece. Uh, the Mustangs will get the ball back shortly. Mustangs keep most of their defense out there as Amesquita gets set to return it. He calls everyone off and lets it bounce. And it takes a positive Harlandale bounce after that decision. Indians let it roll, and the Mustangs will start it at their own 33. But we've discovered the punters are allowed to play tonight, Coach. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, and and the, uh, the punters, uh, a big part of the offense is for both sides. I believe it's a Monte Carter that punts for uh, Jefferson, and, and, and uh, uh, Jacob Sosa that punts for Harlandale. I didn't get, uh, I'm, not sure about, I'm not sure about a Monte Carter, but uh, uh, certainly uh, when uh, Jacob Salcedo is punting, you've got to play defense and you've got to think uh, anywhere on the field uh, he can make something happen. So the Mustangs will start their drive from the 33. And what we've seen so far is that this is exactly where Amante Carter wants to start. Or he could start at the one or the 50 or the opponent's one. It doesn't really matter because number three can do just about everything. Two touchdowns over 70 yards tonight on the ground. Now 10 rushing touchdowns for the all-star Amante Carter. He takes a direct snap and pitches it back. Yeah, 
Indians do a nice job sealing the corner after Ariza saw an opening for a moment and he's slow to get up, but now going back towards the huddle, second and eight coming up for the Mustangs. Uh, Brian, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's Austin and Mesquita that is the punter for the uh, Jefferson Mustangs, but he uh, definitely is a threat as well as, um, for, as uh, Monte Carter is. He was the quarterback while Monte Carter uh, was uh, hobbled by an injury earlier uh, in the season. On uh, the play, the uh, Jefferson Mustangs try to bounce that outside. Uh, the Indians could be vulnerable on the edge as they're putting so many players in the box against a, a, a double tight end offense. Yeah, only Flores out there in the flat. Now he moves into motion. Carter fakes the handoff and rumbles right. Indians, though, right there with them. Number 66, Ramiro Vasquez makes it third and eight. Harlandale Indian defense uh, doing the best that they can to keep uh, Monte Carter in front of them. Uh, they uh, certainly know that if it's a chase and a race, that uh, Monte Carter's got the wheels uh, to uh, get 73 yards and 74 yards away from you. Uh, another third and long. The uh, Mustangs are now three for four in third and long situations. Maybe this is a third and medium, but uh, the Mustangs have converted uh, three of the four that they've faced uh, so far tonight. Third and seven from the 36. And jumping off sides, the Indians can't wait their turn. And it looks like the Mustangs are going to get a cheap five yards. And this will make it third and short after the uh, five yards are, are counted off. And uh, the uh, Mustangs uh, choosing their spots quite cleverly. It's the first time that they've uh, gone with a hard count. And uh, maybe uh, the uh, Arlanda Indian defense feeling like they were timing it and they knew the count. And the Mustangs uh, this time uh, went with the uh, a very timely hard count and a five yard penalty uh, moving up the ball now putting them back on schedule. Absolutely, early in the game, if you remember, if you tuned in right away, the Mustangs were using every second on that play clock and then just going right to the line and going. But right now there's 15 seconds left on the play clock. So the Indians may be thrown off a bit, makes it third and two after the offsides. Flores trying to fight for the extra yardage, but the Indians will make it fourth down and a decision to make by Coach Cardenas. A very interesting decision indeed. Uh, fourth down and two at about midfield. Uh, a one point lead here. The uh, Indians, uh, I, I, I don't know. The uh, uh, Jeff Jefferson Mustang offense is staying on the field. I think if I'm a, if I'm coaching the defense right now, I watch the hard count and um, got to defend. This offense is built to get two yards on the ground. They weren't able to do it on third down. Can they do it on fourth down? Fourth and two from the 41. Carter does the tush push, Jefferson style, and I don't know if he got it. The referee is gonna give their spot. The Indians think they came up with the stop, and they did. Jefferson says they did uh, make it, and uh, the uh, Harlandale says that they did not. The uh, officials will uh, side with the uh, Harlandale Indians argument there, and once again, the Indians will take possession uh, in very advantageous, uh, at a very advantageous spot. Three minutes and 32 seconds left to play. The Indians trail by one, and keep in mind that they will get the opening kickoff in the second half, so it's uh, very likely that they'll have back-to-back -back possessions here. This is a key sequence uh, for the Harlandale Indians here on, at the end of the second quarter and at the beginning of the third. A chance to double dip if you're Harlandale. Four wide receivers set up at the bottom of your screen. The lone receiver at the top is Esparza. Saucedo goes to the left. Esparza has some separation and can't quite haul it in. Just out of reach. And, uh, you know, Jacob Subcedo, he can run. He's got some wheels. And it uh, looked like he had a little bit of uh, running room there. But uh, if they had connected, it would have been a touchdown. Jacob Subcedo, of course, if you watched any uh, Harlandale football at all uh, this year, uh, the young man has a cannon. So uh, I know that the uh, offensive brain trust really likes him throwing the ball. Second and 10 from the Jefferson 42. Indians want to sling it again. Saucedo, pressure from Munoz. He goes around that tackle and now slides. He wants a flag with that hit, but he's not going to get it. Third and five coming up for Harlandale. Uh, he was uh, hit uh, as he slid, but I think it was, uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to side with the officials on that. I know Jacob thought that it was a late hit, but uh, it was a late slide, really. And uh, the yeah, defender did not have an opportunity to avoid that contact. Uh, third, you said th it's third and five, and um, the Indians will uh, keep a, a running back, uh, keep two running backs there uh, with uh, Jacob Subseven. 
And Spars is setting up as the lead blocker. Third and five from the 37. Going down to get it, and he got his hands underneath it. The catch is made, and the first down converted for Joseph Esparza. I'm going to say it again. Uh, Joseph Esparza runs routes about as well as you uh, can imagine, as well as you can expect. A very well executed route. He uh, starts in that little slot position. Looked like a wheel route. It was going to go deep, and he broke it off to the sideline. Great communication between him and Jacob. Goes down for the catch. First down. Clock ticking down towards two minutes in this first half. Arlendale down one, but charging. Saucedo scanning the defense, under throws his receiver, but he comes back to get it. Another touchdown by Michael Palomino, and the Indians are right back on top. And we're gonna take another look at that one as well. Uh, Sebastian Castro doing a great job with the cameras, and Isabella Thea is here at the ta table. We really appreciate them. Jacob Saucedo, his, his strength is extending plays, and uh, it doesn't matter if you have seven uh, defenders back there, or eight, or nine, or 10, or all 11, uh, Jacob Sosedo will extend a play. He'll keep his eyes downfield, and his wide receivers uh, know how to uh, find uh, the open spot in, uh, in, uh, in a defensive backfield. Uh, that time it was Michael Palomino. It was his second touchdown of the night, and I think we've got a timeout on the field. It's uh, the Indians who have called it. Yeah, and we'll stick around right here during this short break because they're either going to go for two, which I would assume they would after that missed extra point to put it up 28 to 21. But let's talk about this offense, Coach Villafranca. Back and forth, back and forth. And on that last play, Palomino showing the wherewithal to come back to get that underthrown ball and then scoring the touchdown. The uh, part of this uh, passing attack for the Harlemdale Indians, Jacob Salcedo, of course, uh, responsible for a lot of that. The kid has got a cannon. He's got wheels that can get himself open. He extends plays, and he's got great range. But uh, this, uh, this core of wide receivers are, are just about as good as any that have uh, put on the maroon and gold. And they do an excellent job of uh, finding the open spots. That time, it looked like it was not a very well-thrown ball, but it was communication between Michael Palomino and Jacob Saucedo. Michael was not going to get over the top. He came back forward. Jacob recognized that, went underneath, and uh, uh, Palomino walked it in. Uh, the uh, five-point lead, uh, missing that extra point, I don't know, Brian. Uh, for me, it's a little early to start uh, counting those points, but uh, with, with an offense like uh, like uh, the Indians and uh, as as volatile, as versatile as it is, why not go for two here? we got a timeout on the field now. Now and Jefferson it's, uh, calls it, so we will take this break with them as Jefferson looks to adjust. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. When you're hit by a motor vehicle, there's nobody that tells you that there's most likely going to be a billion dollar insurance company protecting the driver that just hit you. It's a mistake to play in traffic, just like it's a mistake to go against an auto insurance company all alone. When you get into a car crash, don't fight the billion dollar auto insurance companies alone. If you've been injured in a car crash, call Martinez & Associates today at 210-337-1111. See me shine, 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 shine Walking on beams of Five to go in the first half. Harlandale 26, Jefferson 21. And after a pair of timeouts from both sides, Indian offense remains on the field for a two-point conversion. They're coming off a 26-yard touchdown catch courtesy of Michael Palomino. But they did miss an extra point earlier in the game, so trying to make that back up. Looks like they have Zion Molina in the backfield joining Saucedo with four wide receivers set up for the quarterback. As far as it goes into motion ahead of the snap, he's down in the slot now. Joining Palomino and Dominguez. Tacedo has the read option and he powers forward for the two point conversion. So putting his body on the line for his team, it's a two point good try for the Indians. 28 to 21 over Jefferson as you're watching high school football on RC Audio Sports. I have worked for Harlingdale for nine years. What makes my job special is knowing that the kids are getting a healthy and good meal to get them through the day. 
My kids come here. I have a seventh grader and an eleventh grader, and my daughter graduated from McCullum High School in 2018. Join Harland Alliance D cafeteria staff and be a crucial part of nourishing young minds. Apply today at harlandl.net slash apply. Come be a part of the Harlandl legacy. Welcome back to Alamo Stadium where the Indians lead 28 to 21. We're gonna be looking back at that decision by Jefferson to go for it on fourth and two on their own side of the field. They weren't able to convert. Harlandale, a short field to work with, and they cashed in with eight points after the two-point conversion and the touchdown. The silver lining to that, Brian, and the uh, Jefferson Mustangs can make up for that. They're gonna get the ball back with two minutes and five seconds. You'd normally you think that's not enough time for the Mustangs to score, or not tonight. They're pretty quick striking tonight. Ariza, the one of three back there, he'll take it, and he is tackled just past the 20-yard line. So Daniel Ariza hasn't been able to get in much of a rhythm either on the kick return game or on the running game since that first drive. We'll see if he is active with 1.58 to go in this first half. Love to see the Almond uh, family on uh, in our chat box there. Go Indians, she says, love their number 11. The Almonds watching uh, from uh, Tokyo, Japan. We appreciate you. Uh, following RC Audio Sports, and we appreciate you uh, tuning in. It's got to be sometime in the morning uh, over there in uh, Tokyo. I think it's something like 14 hours uh, difference. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, joining in. The Indians are up. Uh, Jacob Salcedo, a big part of that, 28-21. We talked about the sequence, Brian, earlier that uh, the Indians would, could score and then get the ball back in the, uh, in the third quarter to, have, to double dip, if you will, to uh, subsequent uh, possessions. Jefferson trying to make sure it's not a double dip, however. Not used to seeing them in this spread formation, but they go five wide. The completion to Davin Alderman, and that's a first down conversion for about six. So between those two offensive possessions, the uh, Jefferson Mustangs will have one. It looks like they're in a little bit of a two-minute offense. They have to be in a hurry if they want to get some points before the half. Carter on that ankle is going to be taken down. Fought it for a moment, but that Harlandale defense swallowed him up. Number 70, it looks like, was the first man to get there. 71, David Leha. Uh, a nice pass rush uh, for the uh, Harlandale Indians. And Monte Carter, again, his strength really is, uh, his, we got a timeout on the field, and it is uh, Harlandale that's called it. So they might be looking to want the, the ball back. Uh, we, you're watching high school uh, football on the RC Audio Sports. YouTube channel will be right back. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. Prom 2023 is just around the corner and you want to look your best. At Rex Formal Wear, we've got you covered. Choose from a wide range of styles and sizes and let our expert staff help you find the perfect fit. Don't wait. Come in and reserve your tuxedo today. Visit now and be the talk of the night. An interesting turn of events here. We mentioned Jefferson in a two-minute offense, hurrying it up. Now, all of a sudden, it's third and 14, and it's Harlandale who calls a timeout. They have one left, and they're going to force Jefferson to decide, do you run it and burn that last timeout, or do you dare air it out on third and 14 with a chance to give them the ball back? Carter, with a five-wide receiver set, he is going to throw, and it's air-mailed over the middle of the field looking for Steven Salazar, and now... Harlandale with over a minute left and a timeout will get the ball back. Uh, the uh, couple of bold moves there uh, for the Harlandale Indians uh, sideline and the Jefferson Mustang sideline. I thought it was kind of bold to call that timeout and uh, seek that opportunity to get it back instead of uh, going into the uh, in, into halftime conservatively with a seven point lead, but bold for the uh, Mustangs to throw the ball and not force uh, the other timeout for uh, the uh, Harlandale Indians uh, to call. Uh, Jackson Garcia was the defender on the play. The umpire helped out a little bit. The pass was incomplete. So fourth and very long, the uh, Mustangs will have to punt this. It'll be Ethan Tellez back to receive, wearing some new cleats tonight. The punt returner for the Harlandale Indians. 
roaming to his right. We'll watch it drop and roll out of bounds. So good job by the punter, Austin Amesquita. With 105 to go, Harlandale will have to go pretty much the full length of the field. 28 to 21, their lead. And you might have missed it at the top of the broadcast. We'll continue to sprinkle it in throughout, though. How important this game is for Harlandale, win and in. It's that simple. A win tonight, and they're in the playoffs. For Jefferson, a little more complicated than that, but a win puts them in the driver's seat. So a whole lot to play for at Alamo Stadium tonight, and both teams have certainly showed up. A It'll minute. I'm, I beg your pardon, Brian. But they certainly both have shown up. The uh, uh, minute and five seconds, the Harlandale Indians with one timeout in their pocket. And they have displayed a dizzying ability to go fast on offense, so no doubt that they can do it. First down completion, making several men miss on the outside is number... Let's see, couldn't quite tell right when he made the catch. Looks like 81, Palomino got lost there. He's been on the bottom of our screen all night now at the top. Second and three coming up for Harlandale. They go quickly, looking right is Saucedo, has to scan and wait. He's being chased down, reversing course, and there's Palomino open again. Palomino dragged down at the 20, but we're not gonna miss him this time. Lopez brings him down, but the Indians are set up and going quickly. The Mustangs uh, go back to that straight three-man rush, and uh, Jacob Saucedo just uh, having all the time that he wanted, the receivers, uh, Playing pitch and catch uh, with him and a big gain for the Indians. Timeout on the field. Referees moving the ball back a couple of yards. Looks like he was brought down at the 20, but they're bringing it back to the 22. So on the doorstep of the red zone are the Indians with 30 seconds left. Into the pressure, Saucedo not phased at all, but that one falls incomplete. Lopez breaks it up. Had a nice pass rush coming over uh, from the uh, right edge of the Jefferson Mustangs uh, defense. He had to kind of Patrick Mahomes uh, sidearm that one uh, to get that to the receiver, but unable to connect. Still one timeout left, 21 seconds left to play. And as you said, uh, just on uh, the threshold of the red zone. Second and 10 from the 22. Saucedo adjusting at the line, now ready to go. More pressure off the edge. He just sails it into the end zone where a flag is thrown on the coverage and Amante Carter can't believe it. Looks like he might be called for a hold. Looked like, uh, it looked like uh, Jacob Saucedo kind of uh, didn't get a good grip on the ball. It wasn't uh, the prettiest pass that he's thrown, but uh, uh, chances are that his receiver didn't break like he thought he would, and he tried to hold that one back. The official is going to tell us that it is holding against uh, the defense, and that comes with an automatic first down, a fresh set of downs. With only 16 seconds left to play, I don't know that the, the, the fresh set of downs is that big a deal. Still one timeout. So Carter, the quarterback, making such an impact on offense, but on defense, charged with the penalty. First and 10 from the 12 for the Indians. Saucedo eludes the pressure, rolling right. He finds a man, but he can't bring it in. Defense again by Carter this time. And no penalty. So second and 10 with eight seconds to go in the first half. The clock will stop uh, with the incomplete pass. And, uh, you know, the uh, downside to extending a play is late in the half or late in the game. It eats up a lot of clock. That was, uh, we started at uh, 16 seconds when the Indians got the snap. Rolled down to eight, so it was an eight-second play uh, and uh, to, to no effect. And again, uh, uh, you know, would you like uh, would you like uh, uh, more opportunities? Uh, I guess uh, you want to let uh, you want to put the ball in Jacob Salcedo's hands and, and and let him let him do what he can. But that's uh, that's that's tough. Eight seconds was a big roll off uh, of the uh, of the clock for the Indians. We've got a timeout on the field, but we're going to keep it right here. We're going to talk about uh, some things, and of course, we're getting ready uh, for the. Uh, JLM Real Estate Investment uh, Halftime Show, RC Audio Sports. If you've been watching us all year long, you know that we do not break away uh, for halftimes. We enjoy uh, and present uh, the halftime performances of, of, both, uh, of both schools, and we hope that you'll stay with us. You've used the word gutsy tonight, Coach Villafranca, and this is going to be a gutsy decision for Harlandale. Using their last timeout, Eight seconds to go in this first half. You can't go down in 
I'm going to say, uh, yeah, Brian, I, I'm, I'm going to say with eight seconds, uh, you've used your last time out. I, I, it's probably not going to be a running play. I'm going to say probably something quick, uh, two shots at the end zone, uh, but uh, hopefully don't, don't, want, uh, don't want an extended play, maybe something, a one-step drop back and a quick pass. Yeah, I was going to say you can't be brought down in the field of play, and now Jefferson's going to do what they did on that two-point conversion, which is call a timeout after the Harlandale timeout on offense to get a read on what's going on. But we'll continue to keep it here. Eight seconds to go in the first half. Harlandale 28, Jefferson 21. The Indians coming into tonight 5-2 and two in district play. The Mustangs 4-3. and three. And... Coach Villafranca, the Indians have led in each of their losses this year to Alamo Heights, Burbank, and at the very beginning of the year to Veterans Memorial. So they've been on top. They've just seen that game slip away late a lot of times, especially against Burbank. What do they have to do right now to put them in a good position for the second half? Score. <laughs> Go two touchdowns up, and then uh, they'll be getting the uh, kickoff in the second half. It may be an opportunity here to triple dip and not so much double dip if they can get that score. I wanted to get, go back to a point that you made uh, just a, a second ago, Brian. You're exactly right. It's uh, Not only can it not be a running play, it's got to be a scoring play because even if you throw the ball uh, and you're tackled uh, in the field of play, you're not going to... If, even if you get a first down in high school uh, football, the, the reset is quick. It's not much of a timeout at all. And uh, really, this... Uh, this is probably a sideline then instead of a quick route. If they're going to go for two plays, they're going to have to attack the, uh, the sideline. The middle of the field has to be a scoring play. Eight seconds to work with for Saucedo. He's back to pass, looking towards the end zone, and there he is, but he dropped it. Oh, my goodness. Michael Palomino had a hat trick in his hands, and he sees it slip away. A penalty flag at the end, roughing the passer. And so now the Indians have another decision to make with three seconds to play with. Uh, thir from the 13-yard uh, line, the 12-yard line, half the distance, uh, I'll move that up to the six. And it looks like Coach Torres is going to settle uh, for a field goal here from uh, uh, short range, uh, the uh, incomplete pass, the silver lining to that was that it did stop the clock. The defensive penalty was going to force another play regardless. With three seconds left, this will be the last play of the second half. The Indians will be up by seven or ten, depending on the outcome of this field goal attempt. Time out, Jefferson. They don't want to play any games here on the field goal attempt. So you're watching high school football on RC Audio Sports. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. You're gonna see me shine, 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 shine. Walking on beams of light, 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 light. Welcome back to the Rock Pile, Alamo Stadium, the site of tonight's matchup. Harlandale lined up for a field goal before the timeout. Just three seconds left in this first half, and they are going with the field goal unit once again. Jose Luis Flores trying to add three to Harlandale's lead. Sacedo, the holder, has to go up to get it. The kick. Going to the left just a bit, but it's through the uprights and good. So after a missed extra point, Flores avenges himself and gets the good field goal. Harlandale 31, Jefferson 21, and it's halftime in San Antonio. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. La familia no es una cosa importante. Es todo. At SAISD, family is practicing and making art. It's fulfilling your duty with honor. It's playing to win 
and changing lives through learning. Familia is getting you ready for college or getting you ready for your career. And at SAISD, the founding school district in the Alamo City, Familia is not an important thing. It's everything. And it's available to any student, no matter where they live. So come join our Familia. Now enrolling. Log on to saisd.net forward slash enroll for more information or call 210-554-2660. And we are at halftime at Alamo Stadium. We are going to enjoy the uh, performances of the Harlandale High School Band and the Golden Dancers. I'm going to cut my mic off. I'm going to turn up the PA announcer's mic and enjoy halftime with us. This is, uh, we're close to Halloween, so this is a traditional Halloween show for both bands. Harlandale uh, Golden Dancers, uh, they're led by Miss uh, Jamie Roberts, the award-winning, I should say, Harlandale uh, Golden Dancers, always an entertaining show that they put on. Uh, they'll step off the field, and the Harlandale Indian uh, Band will uh, step on the field. A Division I band uh, they are. They will be competing in the area round at D.W. Rutledge Stadium this Saturday at 1.30 uh, at 1.30 p.m. Uh, the Halloween show is why they're not in uh, unis. Uh, they've got their costumes on. They're going to have a little fun with it tonight, and we're going to have uh, fun watching it. Uh, I'm going to turn my mic down, turn up the PA announcer, and enjoy the show with you. Best number of the week is Andrew Mejia. Best number of the week is Kurt Cushman. Best number of the week is Susie Guzman. Senior majors are Esteban. 
Peralta Aragon, Viviana Macias, and Felix Rodriguez. Tonight, the Million Dollar Band will perform their 2023 UIL halftime show. Wait, time waits for no one. Movement one, two, three, and four. Drum majors, the field is yours.
the Harlandale High School Marching Band, also known as the Million Dollar Band uh, from Indian Land. Uh, we wish Mario and Wario and Yoshi and uh, Luigi, we wish them all the uh, luck in the world at uh, area competition on Saturday, uh, October 28th at DW Rutledge Stadium. This is a Division I band that you just uh, watched. Uh, the band director is Russell Gongara, and the principal, no pressure, but the principal is a former Harlandale drum major himself, Mr. Ricardo Salmon. Uh, best of luck to the Million Dollar Band uh, from Indian Land. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to enjoy the Jefferson Mustangs halftime performance. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. And the Jefferson Mustangs uh, halftime uh, performance now will start off with a uh, performance by the Lassos and the Lariats. Uh, they are uh, directed by Miss Christina Neal. And I'm gonna cut my mic off again and uh, go to the PA announcer. Let's enjoy this halftime show. the famous Jefferson Mustang uh, Lasso and Lariat's team, Christina Neal, the Lasso director, and the Lariat's uh, directed by Anna Leal. Always uh, an entertaining uh, halftime show uh, from them. Uh, if you've got, uh, if you've got um, friends, family that perform at halftime, remind them that the RC Audio Sports uh, streams are always archived on our on our YouTube channels. This is RC Audio Sports. We also have RC Audio Sports 2 on YouTube. And uh, we uh, leave them up for you to come back and visit and enjoy the halftime shows. Uh, if you weren't able to enjoy them live, they'll be right there on our channels. The uh, Jefferson Mustang uh, Marching Band uh, taking the field, it too is a division one band and it too will compete uh, this Saturday, October 28th at the DW uh, Rutledge uh, Stadium in uh, Judson ISD. Uh, I am gonna enjoy this show and if you'll stay with us, you are going to enjoy it too.
Jefferson Mustang Marching Band, a Division I band at regional contest. They've advanced to area and will compete October 28th at DW uh, Rutledge Stadium. We have had the great fortune over the last couple of weeks to feature uh, several Division I bands, and we wish uh, all the bands in the area uh, the best of luck at their area competitions uh, coming up uh, this weekend. The, the kids having a little bit of fun with these, uh, co their costumes uh, as we are so close to Halloween. Uh, the, the, uh, the bands didn't bring out all of their props, but what you saw tonight was the performance uh, that, uh, will, uh, that they will uh, exhibit at the uh, UIL area competition this Saturday. You're watching high school uh, football on the RC Audio Sports YouTube channel. The uh, teams are warming up. About to take the field, we'll be right back. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Signed. Oh! <gasps> <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. Y'all gonna see me shine, 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 shine Walking on beams of light, 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 light oh, 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 oh. After tonight, there is just one game remaining in District 14 5A and across the city of San Antonio for the high school season. But first, a pivotal, pivotal half here at Alamo Stadium as the Harlandale Indians up 31 to 21 over the Jefferson Mustangs. They've scored 11 unanswered points, a touchdown, two point conversion and a field goal as they were down one, but now see themselves up 10. Coach Villafranca, the Indians are in with a win. They are 24 minutes away from that reality. 24 minutes away from the reality and they can take a huge step uh, towards that win and in scenario if uh, they can score on this drive as you said that would be 18 uh, that would be 18 unanswered points uh, for the Indians as they scored twice right before half and uh, now uh, taking the opening kickoff in the uh, third quarter in the second half here so uh, a big drive uh, a big possession for the Indians a big defensive uh, sequence for the Mustangs. Mirel is kicking off another short pooch kick Received by the Indians, number 81, Michael Palomino. He's going to be taken out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He was the star, one of a couple for the Indians on offense. And it's only fitting that he gets the second half going for Harlandale. For the, uh, for the uh, Harlandale Indian opponents, it's a basically pick your poison because they've got three great receivers back there. And if you can't kick it uh, to the end zone, uh, you saw the uh, Mustangs uh, onside kick once and do a little uh, lob kick as well. Uh, but uh, when you do that, you're also giving up some great uh, field position. But you kick off to Michael Palomino, and he's likely to bring it back to the 42-yard line and, and start his offense off at midfield. Harlandale Indians started this year 5-1 and one before consecutive losses to Alamo Heights and Burbank, looking for back-to-back -back playoff appearances after going back last year for the first time since 2019. Jacob Saucedo, a pass play on the first one. Molina using his blockers, but a flag down, roughing the passer, it looks like, as Saucedo has some words with the Jefferson defender, Austin Banda. Personal foul, the official tells us, roughing the passer. That'll be a 15-yard penalty against the Mustangs, and an unfortunate sequence uh, for the Jefferson Mustang defense as the uh, screen really uh, gained very few yards. Uh, Brian, I am going to uh, make one point here as before we go forward, just to keep you right with the Harlandale community. As it turned out, that Vets Memorial game was forfeited to the Harlandale Indians. So they uh, th that that count that puts one on, in the win column, and uh, just uh, that uh, an, in an ineligible player of some sort. 
and uh, so that counted as a win uh, for for the Indians. Saucedo pumps, now fires down the sideline, but just a bit too much on it. Looking for the trifecta, but he'll have to come back on second and 10. In a situation like this, uh, you would uh, expect the Indians to probably be in four down territory. So a lot of times you see uh, a giveaway down uh, for the Indians here in this situation. Probably that first down is a giveaway. Uh, take a shot, uh, take a shot at the end zone and uh, miss. But we still had three downs left. Second and 10 from the Jefferson 38. Molina takes the handoff and he bursts through the middle. First down for Molina, who was relatively quiet in that first half, but perhaps awakening here in the third quarter. Won't need four downs uh, to move the chains on, on uh, this sequence. Uh, Azai Molina, you're exactly right. That is the best play uh, from scrimmage and between the tackles that the Indians have had uh, so far in the game. Running the hurry up offense, here goes Molina again, a more patient run and another positive one. A couple of yards on first down makes it second and seven. Again, very tempting to run the ball against the three man front, but the uh, linebacker core for the uh, Jefferson Mustangs is outstanding and they will support the run as well as protect the, the pass. Uh, the uh, Arlandale Indians in that hurry up offense, if they've got you on their heels, if they've got you on your heels, they're gonna hurry up and snap again. Esparza into motion, stutter step, and now he has the pigskin first down for him as he made his presence felt in the air in the first half, and he's on the ground this time. The uh, jo uh, Joseph Esparza, uh, one of three wideouts on the uh, left side of the offense, he's brought back to the uh, he's brought back towards the uh, the quarterback. It's kind of a jet sweep action, but he turns it upfield uh, between the tackles to get some good yardage. First and 10 from the 10, makes it first and goal. Saucedo looking left. Now he's gonna have to decide whether to run. Avoids the tackle, but he's being chased. And he's gonna be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Quarterback on quarterback crime as Carter brings Saucedo down. He took a shot too. Uh, Monte Carter uh, delivered, uh, delivered a shot there. Uh, J Jacob Saucedo, who I suspect is not 100% himself, uh, comes back to the huddle. Uh, hob hobble just a bit and uh, I'm sure that he was over there by coach Torres and the uh, sideline there I'm sure he was being advised to throw the ball instead of uh, taking a shot like that has an empty backfield before Palomino comes into motion the jet sweep handoff up the middle, Palomino goes, and he moves the pile forward to make it third and goal. Almost identical to the play that Joseph Esparza ran earlier, except to the other side of the offense. And uh, it is third and goal. I was looking for the first down marker, but it is third and goal. Inside the 10, uh, uh, the uh, Indians uh, quickly ready to snap the ball again. Yep, third and goal from the seven. Saucedo. Serving his options, tries to float it up to his receiver, but it's incomplete. Molina, the intended target, and the Mustangs come up with a big-time stop. Brandon Molina out of the backfield into the flat and adjusts his route, uh, just uh, slightly overthrown. He did uh, get one hand up there and uh, made an attempt at it, but just out of reach. So the... Uh, Jefferson Mustangs will slow this offense down a, a little bit and uh, not allow a touchdown. A field goal will be attempted. Hold by Saucedo, the kick up and good by Jose Luis Flores. So back-to-back -back field goals for him. Put the Indians up 34 to 21. 9.03 left in the third quarter. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Signed. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio, three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates.
Welcome back to the Rock Pile, Harlandale, 34, Jefferson, 21. The Indians have scored on three straight drives. However, the last two have been field goals, so perhaps some missed opportunities that they're going to regret later. Uh, a couple of uh, halfway missed opportunities indeed, uh, Brian. Uh, 14 points. Uh, could have been 21 points or more if you had gone for two, but seems like uh, to me that maybe about seven points were left on the table in those three sequences. Let's see if the Mustangs can make them pay. Ariza, the kick returner here, runs into his own man Flores, and then he is brought down. Roger Dominguez making the tackle, and the Mustangs will have it at their own 20. Roger Dominguez, an outstanding receiver for the Harlandale Indians, is showing some uh, defensive prowess on the kickoff uh, on the kickoff cover team. So the Mustangs will begin their drive on the 18. Their greatest start to a season since 1961. They started 4-1 and one before a couple of losses, and they lost their quarterback as well. Amante Carter hurting his ankle against Brackenridge. Mustangs won that game, but then it showed up in the next couple of losses. However, number three is back in business. He came up with that big comeback win against McCollum a week ago, and he is doing his part in driving his offense down the field tonight. A pitch left to Ariza to begin this drive, but he's going nowhere. Just back to the line of scrimmage for number five. In Amante uh, Carter's absence, uh, Austin Mesquita uh, held the fort down uh, for the Mustangs. Daniel Ariza certainly doing his part as well and uh, putting the Jefferson Mustangs in a position where they are still in the uh, playoff conversation with just a couple of games left in the regular season. We talked to head coach Ed Cardenas for Jefferson about how important a winning season would be, looking for their first winning season since 2009. And he said right from the get-go, he talked to his team about how special that would be. They just need one win in their last two games, including tonight, to have that. So we'll see if they can come up with it. Second and nine from the 19. Carter keeps it himself, and he is pushing himself forward towards the yard to gain right at the marker. And they're going to say, move those chains. First down, Jefferson. Amante Carter has a 73-yard touchdown run, a 74-yard touchdown run, and he doesn't look like he's stopping anytime soon. Has a conversation with his offensive coordinator, Gerald Crewalt. He's a big reason why the Mustangs have implemented this stack eye offense. The quarterback under center, two fullbacks right behind him, and then the running back about five yards behind that fullback. They're going with it here. Handoff quickly to one of those fullbacks right behind Carter, and you can see it looks like rugby. Coach Villafranca called it rugby last time. Ball is loose at the end of that play. Austin Banda, the ball carrier, and also a flag on the field. So let's take a look at what the officials have to say. Personal foul face mask against Harlandale, and that'll move the chains for the Mustangs. So two consecutive first downs puts the Mustangs right up against Indian territory. Austin Banda and Michael Martinez, usually the fullbacks that line up right behind Carter. It's been a switch of Flores and Ariza for the tailback behind them. And it's that setup once again. Three, 30, 43, and five. It'll be three tossing to five. And the Indians snuff it from the get-go. Back to the line of scrimmage goes Ariza. Second and 10 from the 49. Coach Villafranca working on some technical difficulties here. On a beautiful night from Alamo Stadium. Clock ticking below seven minutes. We're sandwiched between the San Antonio Zoo and Trinity University here at the Rock Pile. Established in 1940, has seen its fair amount of big games and another one tonight, a playoff spot on the line. Second and 10 from the 49 for Jefferson. Carter squatting down, fakes the handoff to Ariza, but look at the Harlandale defense. They are not fooled anymore. Gets about two after that initial resistance, but it'll be third and long for the Mustangs. Brian, you bring up uh, Trinity University. You know a thing or two about uh, TU, do you not? 
maybe a thing or two, I'd say. You and uh, Haley Wilson, another member of the RC Audio Sports uh, stream team, uh, certainly did their damage uh, on uh, the Trinity University uh, campus. Both of them a part of a Trinity TV, I believe it was called, and uh, broadcasted while you were students there, and we're glad to have them, both Haley Wilson and Brian Yanselson, on our RC Audio Sports stream team. It's very nice to go on Stadium Drive and turn left instead of right for a change. Third and seven from the 47 for Jefferson. Flores, a full head of steam. Harlandale is going to stop him after a gain of four, but it looks like Jefferson is going to want to go for this one. Down 13 points, uh, the uh, Mustangs at the Harlandale Indians 42-yard uh, line. I think it's uh, pretty much an automatic uh, here. They're going to need points. They can't give the ball back to a, a potent Harlandale Indian offense. Uh, down 13, they just can't give the ball back uh, to them without scoring. Uh, that, uh, that would be a, certainly a, a nail in the coffin uh, as we use uh, Halloween analogies here. Halloween indeed. Harlandale loading up the box on fourth and three at the 42, drop snap, Carter has to adjust going left, stiff arms a defender, and he's gonna get the first down. Number 23, Nathaniel Vasquez, thought he had a beat on Carter, and Carter said, I have other plans. I have other plans, and it had, uh, the stiff arm was a part of that. We uh, made mention of that last week against uh, the uh, McCullum Cowboys. Uh, We've seen his wheels, but a, a demonstration of a lot of upper body strength to Monte Carter as he is apt to really throw a stiff arm and de de deny a defender a tackle. He's, he's got, uh, you know, if you want to tackle a Monte, you probably don't want to go high or you will uh, fall victim to a very uh, effective uh, stiff arm. First down for Jefferson after the fourth and three conversion. Carter with the handoff to Flores. He's going to shuffle forward for a gain of two. 4.30 left in the third quarter. Harlandale 34, Jefferson 21. But this could be one of those pivotal turning points, Coach Villafranca. Earlier in the first half, Jefferson went for it on fourth and two, didn't get it, and Harlandale went and scored, took the lead, and haven't looked back since. Now on fourth and three, Mustangs convert, and they have to cash it in. Anytime that you are playing against uh, a quick strike offense or a very effective offense like the Indians, you really have to be very efficient with your uh, offensive possessions. Fake handoff, play action, and a big hit taken by Carter, delivered by Carlos de la Vega. Makes it third and eight, but a flag in the secondary. A lot of contact uh, through the routes as the uh, Harlandale Indian uh, linebackers are uh, tying up uh, those routes and denying them, uh, you know, denying them to uh, break free. And as long as they're receiving high school uh, in high school football, it's holding against the uh, it's holding against the uh, Harlandale Indian defense. And that, of course, as we've said twice before already tonight, that's an automatic first down. But uh, in high school football, you can maintain contact as long as the receiver is in front of you but you can't grasp you can't hold on you can't grab a jersey and uh, uh, apparently that is the uh, violation that uh, Indians have committed here several times uh, this evening but they're doing a good job they're trying to jam that route they're trying to keep that route from releasing uh, they've got and you have to when you've got that many men in the in the box and, and somebody tries to break the box and get into a route from the offensive side of the ball you just have to jam it because you're not in a you know, you're not in a position to, to cover the route. Amante Carter rolled to his left, extended the play a little bit, kind of forced the issue, and the holding uh, was called. Well, that's a key point. Only four attempted passes tonight, so those Indians in the box think that they're defending the run, and then they can't help but hold on those routes. We've seen it a couple of times. Carter keeps it himself, surges forward, and a gain of three on first down. The methodical offense for Jefferson looks like it's back in this second half. Four attempted passes so far, and two of them won't, won't, show, won't show up in the uh, stat sheet, but uh, two of them resulted in defensive holes. Uh, so uh, effectively six, uh, six passes uh, thrown and two, uh, those, 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 def those defensive holding penalties are like receptions uh, for the offense. Uh, so again, that uh, certainly working uh, to the favor of the Jefferson Mustangs. We're approaching the three minute mark in the third quarter, the Indians holding on uh, to a 13-point lead, but the Mustangs hanging around. 12th man off the field at the last second for Harlandale. They're going to need all 11 to stop Zach Flores here, shimmying his way past the line of scrimmage. The flag thrown by the umpire in the area of holding.
The penalties that we've seen tonight, uh, Brian, have uh, come at, at critical moments and drives, but it's been a very error-free uh, game on both sides of the ball. It's holding, but this time it'll be against the offense, and we'll replay the down, which was uh, down number two, but uh, the uh, line of scrimmage will move back 10 yards, and for a team that loves to run the ball like Jefferson Mustang, like the Jefferson Mustangs, that's a pretty heavy consequence. What a credit to their offensive line, though, to make that the first offensive holding penalty with how much they run the ball. Over 260 yards on the ground per game, yet you rarely see calls like that. It does come at a dangerous time, though. Third and, or second and 17 coming up for the Mustangs after that holding penalty. Let's see if Carter looks to pass for just the fifth time tonight. Gavin Lopez in motion. He's going to get the handoff. He's got some room to work with on the right edge, and he's brought down out of bounds. First carry we've seen for Lopez, who's done work defensively, but now steps in offensively. A lot that you can do with your offensive alignment as you look back across and, and see what the defense is doing to match you up. And again, you bring that many defenders and you bring that many defenders uh, into the box, and it, it certainly appears that the edge would be. Uh, the edge would be vulnerable, but Robert Acuna runs that one down and doesn't let that uh, that play get uh, very far. Robert yeah. Acuna, uh, a senior, a defensive back uh, for the uh, for the Harlandale Indians. And I'm going to say it again. I've said it a couple of times. Austin Amesquita, a little too quiet tonight. A touchdown last week, over 70 yards. Does Carter go to him? He's looking that way. But instead, it's number 88 who can't quite haul it in. Alderman made the only catch for the Mustangs in the first half, couldn't reel it in here, and it's fourth and 12 for Jefferson. Noah Wizard uh, allowed Alderman to get uh, by him, but he played, uh, he played some very good chase defense, if you will. He was behind the pass, but he was right there, and he affected it. He sw swept his arms right through, the, uh, right through the catch and made sure that... Uh, the pass was not secured. A Mesquita and a Monte Carter. Offense still on the field with 2.12 to go in the third quarter. Mustangs down 13, looking to go for it on fourth and 12. And Davon Alderman coming in from the sideline with the call. Alderman and Amesquita, the receiver, is lined up at the bottom of your screen. Carter rolling left, looking for Amesquita, the loft and the bat. Indians snuff the fourth down attempt. Great job by J.C. Fuentes to break it up. Make that Robert Acuna 12, not 32 on the deflection. Either way for Harlandale, a massive stop to get the ball back. Robert Acuna with two big defensive plays uh, in that series. Uh, he stopped the uh, he stopped the edge run, the jet sweep over there at the uh, on the other side of the field, and then. As you said, I mean, you, uh, you, you almost predicted it, uh, Brian. A Mesquita was going to be, his, his number was going to be called eventually, and that was a big play. Acuna was there to break up the pass. Indians take over at their own 26. Mustangs tried to get back in the game, but now Indians looking for the dagger. Into the teeth of the defense. Mustang defense is not so fast. They stuff Molina on first down. And the Indians haven't met much resistance tonight, but Molina has had a quiet night. Seven touchdowns on the year, over 650 yards. Indians will set up in their five wide receiver look. It's given them a lot of success tonight. Going right back to it on second and 12 from the 24. No one near number 82 who's able to tumble his way past the first down marker. Roger Dominguez had about a mile radius around him, and that's another Harlandale first down. The uh, Mustangs on that uh, on that play uh, send a four men uh, to Jacob Salcedo. The Harlandale line does a good job of protecting him, and we've said it. Roger Dominguez, uh, one of these uh, excellent wide receivers, again, finding the hole, finding the hole in the donut, stopping right there. Jacob Salcedo reading that and getting the ball to him. Salcedo really hasn't been forced out of the pocket all too much today. And with this five wide receiver look, Mustangs rushing just three. He's had the time to work with tonight. Esparza coming into motion, taking the handoff and an excellent block on the right side. Esparza still running first down Harlandale. Joseph Esparza, not, not the biggest guy in a 14-5 AD2, but uh, one of the toughest runners in the district. And again, the uh, I think the Indians really... Uh, uh, 
uh, taking advantage of that outside rush. The uh, Mustangs giving up uh, number 40 as a, a linebacker, sending him uh, on a rush on the outside, and the Indians turning the jet sweep up inside of him. And uh, one man short, the uh, Mustangs are inside the tackles once you do that. Time running out in the third quarter, Saucedo. All day to throw, and he finds his man. Look at him roam into the end zone for the third time tonight. Michael Palomino, touchdown, Indians. Let's take another look at that. Uh, Sebastian Castro on the cameras here tonight, and uh, Isabella Te is at the tech table doing a great job catching all these moments. Uh, Jacob uh, Saucedo looks downfield. Michael Palomino wide open. And uh, again, pitch and catch for the Indians. Uh, the delivery is made, a touchdown. Harlandale, 40 to 21 uh, with an extra point attempt coming. With 15 seconds left in the third quarter, that definitely feels like a dagger. Time to work with Fort Jefferson, but with their offensive firepower built on the ground, Makes it all the more difficult to come back, but a blocked kick here might help sway the momentum back in their favor. That's the second time Flores has missed an extra point. So make it 40 to 21 Harlandale over Jefferson. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. Get ready. Grab it, grab it, let's go. Go, See me shine, 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 shine Walking on beams of seconds left here in the uh, third quarter at Alamo Stadium. The Harlandville Indians with a commanding 19-point lead over the Jefferson Mustangs. It's 40-21. Uh, to 21. We uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we've got another quarter of uh, football action here. Uh, we, again, we thank you for joining us while you're here. Take a moment to subscribe to RC Audio Sports, our YouTube channel. Remember that we have a second YouTube channel as well. Bobby Mendes has got that crew over at the SAISD Sports Complex. Uh, Bendera has uh, taken a little longer trip to play YMLA 24A uh, football teams in uh, the uh, San Antonio area. But again, we thank you for joining our game tonight uh, on RC Audio Sports. While you're here, take a moment and subscribe. Definitely take that moment to subscribe. If you don't, you might miss some of the amazing action we've had, and we've had plenty of it. Arlendale kick coverage team gets back. Ethan Tejas there makes the excellent tackle. Just seven seconds left in this third quarter. And I know you're going to want to credit this offense with 40 points on the board, and certainly you do. However, one thing I was looking at coming into tonight is the Harlandale defense in their wins. Three of them have been shutouts, no points on the board. However, in their losses, they've, allo they've allowed 137 points, 45 per game. It started out rough for the Harlandale defense, but so much credit goes to them for buckling down against an explosive Jefferson offense. The uh, Jefferson uh, offense uh, scored on their uh, first two possessions, and uh, the adjustments were made, and and uh, have slowed down. They've scored once since then. We're about to go into the fourth quarter. Final play of this third quarter is Aiden Amante Carter run to the left. Not a huge gain. In fact, looks like he lost a yard. And we are headed to the fourth quarter with it. Harlandale 40, Jefferson 21. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. When you belong to a place as much as it belongs to you, you call it home. A place to gather, entertain, and make memories near shops, restaurants, and green spaces. A place to raise a family and grow. Life is good here and getting better. And at Brooks, we are just getting started. Live Brooks. See me shine, 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 shine Walking on beams of light, 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 light oh, 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 oh. 
12 minutes to go here at the Rock Pile. Looking good for the Harlandale Indians. They are the visiting team tonight. Jefferson celebrating senior night. They've got their band, they've got their dance team, but it's gonna be Harlandale feeling the best going into this fourth quarter, trying to join Alamo Heights and Burbank in District 14 5A playoff picture. A win and Harlandale is in. Jefferson not wanted to go down quietly, however. If you remember last week on RC Audio Sports, they trailed deep in that fourth quarter. It wasn't until a Carter touchdown with 44 seconds left that the Mustangs escaped a win with a win at McCollum. First play of this fourth quarter, Amante Carter spins and moves forward. Gain of about four to make it third and medium. The uh, Mustangs going back to the uh, counter keeper that uh, has uh, produced a couple of the uh, Monte Carter's long touchdown runs. Uh, a run of 73 yards and a run of 74. If he can just get back, if he can just get past that first level of Harlandale uh, defense, make it a race. He's hard to catch. This Harlandale defense though, is just not worried about the passing game. They're putting all 11 up near the line of scrimmage. If they need to, they're putting one on whoever lines up at the receiver position. But it's only been one completed pass for the Mustangs. So until they show they can do it, Indians not going to be worried. Play clock down to two. Carter has to hurry. Ariza into motion, setting up the block for Carter, utilizing it to perfection and crossing the line of game for the first down. Great patience by Amante Carter there as he read uh, his blockers out in front. Number 75 was a big part of that play. Jaden Blankhart, and uh, he came in uh, in, the, in the game uh, for an injury. I think uh, David Bettis uh, was injured early in the game, and this is uh, Blankhart getting his chance. He did a great job. Amante Carter uh, running that play like a skier would behind a, a ski boat, a jet boat, just riding the wake and, and uh, getting all that he can get, get from it. Could have done a whole lot of water-related activities tonight with all the rain we had in San Antonio. Even had a tornado touchdown near here at Alamo Stadium. If you've seen the news today, right near this area, just north of downtown, a tornado was seen in San Antonio. But right now, the only thing blowing things away is this Harlandale Indian team. Uh, Brian, I don't know about a tornado, but it'll be the Hurricanes at uh, SAISD Sports Complex uh, playing tomorrow, Houston and Highlands. And we talk about playoff implications. The uh, Houston Hurricanes have an opportunity uh, to make a statement tomorrow if they can beat the Highlands Owls. I, I, I'll have to go back and do math, but I'm pretty sure that will qualify them for a playoff. Jefferson not going against the grain so far on this drive, just continuing to run, run, run. Ariza this time gets forward to make it third and short. If memory serves me, Brian, and it doesn't always do that, but if memory serves me, I think the uh, situation for the uh, Houston Hurricanes this weekend was a win by them coupled with a win by Harlandale, and that would get them in. It looks like Harlandale is doing uh, their part of the deal. The Houston Hurricanes can uh, seal the uh, rest of the deal with a, with a win against uh, the Highlands Owls tomorrow. Well, you can watch that one on RC Audio Sports 2. Bobby Mendez will be heading up that crew. Ariza once again setting up the block along with the fullbacks. Carter over a defender and past the marker yet again. So Carter not backing down. Nine minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Mustangs trying to creep back into it. Carlos De La Vega all the way from the other side uh, giving pursuit. And uh, what, uh, you know, what that helps is that it, it, it rushes the run. And on a previous play, we talked about the patience that Amante Carter had in reading his block and any kind of hesitation any kind of read like that, uh, backside pursuit, well, you know, we'll take care of that. And uh, so that, uh, you know, it forces the issue, doesn't let you, uh, doesn't let you get a, a good read on your block and just makes it a little tougher to move the ball. Austin Amesquita back in the game. He's going to take the snap for the first time tonight. Still going to be a handoff to Ariza, so that much hasn't changed. And now Amesquita will head back to the sideline in favor of Carter. We saw uh, Jaden uh, uh, Monte Carter. We saw Monte Carter last week uh, take a break uh, uh, about uh, this uh, part, this uh, at this uh, 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 phase of the game. Uh, rem uh, remember that he plays both ways. Uh, he's a safety and he's a quarterback, and he doesn't get, uh, you know, he doesn't get a break unless uh, the coaches will work one in for him. Maybe just uh, coming over here to get a get a drink of 
some wet stuff. Carter back in the game. And he burst through the defense. Amante Carter for the third time tonight has a rushing touchdown. This Utilize one, that break to perfection. Oh my God, to perfection. Yeah, indeed. A 57 yard run this time for Amante Carter. And uh, boy, you talk about a perfectly timed break and a perfectly timed uh, wet your lips here just a little bit, Amante. And uh, back out on the field, a 57 yard run uh, for Amante to go along with the 73 and 74 yard runs uh, earlier in the game. I'm, uh, surely uh, you've got to be you've got to be happy for the kid uh, coming back after an injury and performing like he has tonight. So pressure back on the Indians. However, the extra point, no good wide left it goes. So a 13 point lead for the Indians with 7.46 to go in the fourth quarter. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. We bring you back uh, to Alamo Stadium where the Arlandale Indians and the Jefferson Mustangs are battling it out. It's a win and you're in situation for the Arlandale Indians. It's a win and stay in the convo for the uh, Jefferson Mustangs. They're staying in the convo in the game tonight, still trailing, but uh, have narrowed the uh, deficit to 13 points with seven minutes and 46 seconds to go. Special teams here, you gotta think uh, that uh, you're going to get a squib kick or a lob or an onside kick. The Harlandale Indians uh, see a lot of 80s and uh, 30s on that front line. So the hands team, the uh, re the uh, deep returners, uh, only as deep as a 25-yard line. So certainly the Indians have uh, prepared uh, for the onside kick. It'll be Morellis' leg responsible for the upcoming kick. He does squib it and an excellent grab by Ethan Tellez, securing that ball like a baby and giving the Indians possession with 7.45 left in the fourth quarter. Ethan uh, Tellez uh, looked like a short stop on, on the play, just a, a hard hop, and uh, he was down on it, secured it quickly, and Coach Thod is out to pat him on the head here. Nice play. That's a, that was a, a big play. I think that was Coach Hernandez actually patting him on the uh, patting him on the head. That was a nice play. It's a play that's not going to go down in the, uh, you know, won't go down in the stats, uh, but uh, to secure that onside kick up only by 13 points, uh, that's big. Whether the Indians score or not, you would expect them to roll off at least a couple of minutes here uh, as, uh, as we've calculated before, 40 seconds of play, three plays, 120 seconds, uh, two minutes. Uh, uh, every first down is worth about two minutes. Pressure is still on the Indians with 7.45 to go. Have to keep their foot on the gas. Saucedo out to Palomino. Why not? If it's worked all night, keep going to him. That's a completion for about four on first down. He came awfully close to the uh, sideline, and it's, uh, it's time uh, to talk about the little things, Brian. The, uh, Arlandale Indian offense, it's incumbent upon them to run time off the clock. You certainly don't want to take the, you certainly don't want to take the ball out of bounds. And uh, Palomino just uh, was tackled just inside that uh, sideline. I guess his forward progress was stopped before he rolled onto the white. Uh, the clock is running. Yeah, I was going to say, I could have sworn he rolled forward for at least three or four, but they're saying second and nine from the Harlandale 47. They decide to keep it in the air. Jefferson sends the pressure, can't get to Saucedo, and he breaks free, brought down from behind by Carter, or else he would have broken past this defense entirely. Amante Carter in the uh, Jefferson Mustang defense uh, playing the, the safety spot. The uh, Indians do not send any routes uh, down the middle of the field. It allows Amante to essentially be the spy on the play, and he... Uh, uh, prevents uh, Jacob Salcedo from uh, making a big gain on the play. The Arlandale Indians, who you are used to seeing in a hurry-up type offense, all of a sudden now turning, uh, getting their, putting, taking their foot off the gas pedal just a bit and letting clock run down. 
Third and six from midfield. Jefferson needs a stop right now. Run up the middle by Esparza. They're not going to get it. Esparza weaving through the defense, now going towards the sideline before cutting back. Turns left, and he's going to get knocked out at the 10. Left and right, and left and right. Esparza went before finally being knocked out. You, uh, you called it weaving through the defense. I think he, uh, he put a blanket together uh, with all of those uh, weaves. And, uh, boy, Joseph Espars, again, I said it earlier, not the biggest kid in 14-5 uh, uh, AD2, uh, but uh, certainly one of the toughest runners. He's a wide receiver, but he's also uh, a favorite uh, of, this, uh, of the offensive play callers to get the uh, jet sweep. That time it was a pass and yards after catch for uh, Joseph Esparza. First and 10 from the 11, so the Indians can get a first down without having a touchdown, but a back-breaking first down for the Mustang defense. Handoff up the middle to Molina. He bowls forward for a gain of four. About the six-minute mark uh, when the uh, chains were moved. Uh, so again, you know, you calculate those 40 seconds per play, three plays in a series before you have to punt here. It's a four-down situation, so you're talking about 160 seconds up to about 160 seconds that's a you know two minutes and 40 seconds that you can roll off the clock whether you score or not and that would leave very little time for the uh, mustangs to make up 13 points we called it a three-headed receiving attack esparza palomino and dominguez esparza and palomino came into tonight each with 28 receptions palomino has three touchdowns esparza has two and here's palomino looking for a fourth looks like he's going to be just short but was going to say Esparza came into tonight tied on receptions, might as well leave tied on touchdowns as well. But Palomino has just stolen the show lately. The officials uh, called the, the uh, tackle in uh, the in the field of play, and uh, the clock will uh, continue to run, even though Michael Palomino was dangerously close to stepping out of bounds and stopping uh, these ticks of the clock. Third and one from the three. Like we said a couple of plays ago, they can get a first down without it being a touchdown. Indians probably would prefer that at this point just to keep that clock rolling. It's Esparza. He says, let me join you, Michael, with a hat trick. A third touchdown for Joseph Esparza, and the Indians really put a dagger in it now. We've seen that jet sweep uh, several times uh, tonight. Michael Palomino has run it. Uh, Joseph Esparza runs it about as well as anybody. And again, turning it up outside that outside uh, linebacker blitz and... Uh, the uh, defense outnumbered uh, when the Indians uh, do that. Joseph Esparza uh, in the end zone for the Indians and uh, has extended the lead now to 19 points. Could be 20 with a successful extra point. Operation is a clean one. Up and good by Flores. And the Indians will take a 20-point lead into this break. You're watching High School Football on RC Audio Sports. Get ready. Prom 2023 is just around the corner, and you want to look your best. At Rex Formal Wear, we've got you covered. Choose from a wide range of styles and sizes and let our expert staff help you find the perfect fit. Don't wait. Come in and reserve your tuxedo today. Visit now and be the talk of the night. Yeah, we're going to see me shine, 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 shine. Walking on beams of light, light, light. Joseph Esparza, his third touchdown of the night, joining his teammate Michael Palomino. Each of them have three. Those receivers providing explosive offense all night long for these Indians, who now lead 47 to 27 with 4.27 to go. Flores kicks it away. Three Mustangs there to receive it, but they're going to let it bounce behind the end zone for a touchback. 
This game started with a bang. Daniel Ariza put the Mustangs up seven to nothing. A drive that took five minutes and 50 seconds. It was a statement made by Jefferson saying, we are gonna give you a fight tonight. However, the Indians responded. A 73-yard touchdown catch by Palomino evened it up just 50 seconds later. And ever since then, after a little bit of back and forth in the first half, it's really been all Harlandale, especially in this second half, where they've outscored Jefferson 16 to six. For Jefferson though, while it looks like they may come up just a bit short tonight and put themselves in a very difficult position for their playoff hopes, still have a winning season on the horizon if they can beat Edison next week. Monte Carter looking for some options here, just dumps it off to Ariza. Ariza has room in the middle of the field and he's looking for some points. One man to beat and Ariza makes his way back into the end zone, however, a yellow flag at midfield could bring this all the way back. And just by the looks of it, big number 75, Jaden Blankart, is out where a lineman usually is not supposed to be on a pass. So we'll see if it's ineligible receiver downfield. Well, the Mustang linemen are celebrating. And they should be. They're going to have that touchdown upheld. So Ariza takes it 75 yards to the house. And with four minutes and 10 seconds remaining, maybe the Mustangs aren't dead quite yet. Boy, that's the last thing that uh, anybody rooting for the Arlandale Indians uh, wanted to see is a quick touchdown. Uh, uh, if, even if the Mustangs had scored, if they had eaten up some of the, uh, some of the time on the clock, would have made it more difficult uh, for the uh, for them to come back. But a quick strike like that, this is the third, fourth quick strike for the Mustangs that we usually see in a grind out fashion. Extra point is good. It's a 13 point game at the rock pile. So don't go away just yet. Well, you're watching high school football on RC Audio Sports. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check, sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. Y'all gonna see me shine, 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 shine Walking on beams of light, 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 light oh, 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 oh. Mustang still have some horsepower left in the tank with 4.10 to go in the fourth quarter. Arlendale up by 13, but a 75-yard Ariza touchdown keeps Jefferson just in it enough to make it interesting here. The Jefferson Mustangs have now scored 34 points against uh, the Arlandale Indians, and the Indians have only given up that many uh, points twice before. It just so happens. Mustangs look like they might have a beat on this onside kick. No, says the referee. The Indians recovered it late. It bounced off the initial Indian there, Molina, but then the maroon and gold bounce on it anyway. So the Indians are dodging a bullet there, and I was making the point that the Indians have, uh, only two other teams have scored more points than the Mustangs have against this hard Indian defense. Last week, uh, the Burbank Bulldogs dog scored 35, and Alamo Heights a week before that scored 60. So. This is the uh, third consecutive game that uh, the Arlandale defense has given up 30 plus, and uh, that's got to be. Uh, although winning your end, it looks like they, the, you know, don't want the Mustangs are still alive. We can't count your, you know, can't count your chickens before they're hatched, and uh, uh, this is this is still a game. But it should uh, things uh, play out in, uh, should things play out in Arlandale's favor, uh, it's uh, certainly got to be an area of concern to give up uh, 30 plus points in uh, three consecutive games uh, if they're heading uh, if they're headed to uh, the playoffs the uh, uh, for Jefferson and their part this is um, they scored 55 against Brackenridge but have not scored in the 30s in their eight uh, previous uh, games uh, so um, 
Yeah, the Indians are uh, struggling against uh, an offense that uh, doesn't uh, generally put up this many points. We've seen it firsthand though. This offense, when it gets going, can definitely put this kind of showcase on the board with a healthy Amante Carter and Daniel Ariza in the backfield to support him. Coach Ed Cardenas calls in the one-two punch and they have certainly been a one-two punch on that stack eye offense. Every time you turn around, it seems like number three or number five are celebrating six. And, uh, you know, for the, uh, for the uh, defensive brain trust uh, of the Arundel Indians, it is a tough decision. I'm gonna let you call this play and then we're gonna come back to that. Sacedo's had a masterful night. As first and 10 from his own 45, slings it to Palomino, still going with the passing game. And I guess if you got 81 there to make it work, you gotta keep doing it. Palomino, uh, some great catches and some great yards after catch. But, you know, for the Jefferson Mustangs, I mean, they, they, they load up the box and you've got to load it up with them. If you want to stop the run, their bread and butter, you've got to put a lot of guys up there by the uh, football at the line of scrimmage. But, uh, you know, the downside to that is once a, once a, a runner breaks the uh, first, le uh, first level of defense, you know, it's a race a, a lot of times. And there's some wheels on this uh, Jefferson Mustangs uh, Offense, uh, Ariza can run, and Amesquita can run, and Amante Carter, we've seen him run as well. So, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a tough, uh, it's a dilemma that uh, the Mustangs intend to put their their opponents in. Zion Molina taking the handoff there from uh, Jacob Saucedo, and again, on this possession, one of the uh, main objectives for the Harlandale Indians is to eat up the time on the clock. And it goes to show just how much trust they have in their senior quarterback, Jacob Saucedo, you would normally run the ball in this type of situation, but to them, those little bubble screens and short throws, they act as though they're runs because they're so confident they're gonna complete them. And that first one on the drive actually looked like it was to Dominguez, number 82. So all those receivers for the Indians in the 80s, Palomino, Dominguez, and Hernandez among them, can get confusing sometimes from the press box up here. But what's not confusing has been the dominance of this Harlandale offense. There is 81 in motion, but it's 21 Molina who gets the carry, and he tumbles forward for another Harlandale first down. A lot of confidence in uh, the senior quarterback and uh, uh, confidence that uh, he has proven himself to deserve. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a ball, you know, it's a ball control passing kind of a game. Uh, these uh, swing passes to the to the slots in, in the uh, out there on the perimeter, they're 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 behind the line of scrimmage with the Jason with the Jacobs arm. I mean, he can fling it out there. The ball is going to get there in a hurry, and uh, then uh, the uh, athletes that the Indians have out there, it's uh, you know match them up and one match them up, put them in one-on-one -on -one, uh, situations. Jefferson does have three timeouts. They have not spent any of them so far. Molina continues to make them pay up the middle. A solid run on first down. And there is the first timeout called by Jefferson. So we'll take a break on RC Audio Sports. You're watching high school football from Alamo Stadium. Join the legacy today and become a teacher for Harlandale ISD. Here at Harlandale, we offer many benefits for you and your family, competitive pay, and a starting salary for teachers of $58,000. We offer teacher stipends for teaching bilingual classes, coaching, special education, and more. Here at Harlandale, we are inspiring our students to be the change. Join us today and make a difference tomorrow. Apply now at harlandale.net slash apply. It has been an energy-filled night from Alamo Stadium tonight. 47-34, to Harlandale the lead with 1.51 to go. Jefferson made it interesting, scoring on a 75-yard touchdown pass to Ariza, but the Indians doing what they've needed to help put this game away. It'll be second and three from the 19. A handoff with the man in motion up the middle to Molina, just short of a first down. And another timeout by Jefferson. They've got two remaining, but we'll stay right here. 1.41 to go, Harlandale up 13. And you know, Coach Villafranca, we're so close to the zoo. I couldn't help but wonder tonight 
Do you think the zebras mistake the referees for one of their own when they walk by here? <laughs> well, Brian, uh, might have to think about that one. <laughs> you know, I, I, just something that I thought of today. I said, you know what? Maybe it's their Halloween costume. Maybe do they? You think they dress up as referees for Halloween, or maybe they do. Yeah, they give them a whistle and uh, you know a white hat. One of them wears a white hat. The other ones wear black hats. And I mean, the Harlandale marching band all came today in their costumes. We've got some interesting ones, right? We were trying to identify Mario, <laughs> Luigi. Saw some Dalmatians and Luigi and Wario and Yoshi and uh, yeah, a bunch of them out there. The uh, both the Harlandale Indian uh, Harlandale High School uh, marching band, also known as a Million Dollar Band from Indian Land, and the Jefferson High School marching band as well, having a little bit of fun here on a Thursday night, a couple of uh, days away from their uh, big area marching competition at uh, D.W. Rutledge Stadium. This Saturday at um, 1:30 for uh, Harlandale, and I'm gonna have to check with the uh, mar with the uh, Mustang uh, band director to know when they march. But I do happen to know that Harlandale will be performing at 1:30. Third and one, Saucedo will keep it himself. He's not gonna get to the yard to gain. So a nice stop by this Jefferson front line. They'll take their final timeout. We'll keep it right here. Why not? We're having Enjoying some fun, that? right? All right, we'll let you ponder. But, uh, uh, musings by uh, Brian Yanselman. Yeah, so we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll stay we'll stay right here and we'll enjoy your your musings, Brian. Well, I was going to add to your point about the bands having fun and just say I might be biased, but the bands are the best part of high school football, don't you think? Well, when you walk into a stadium oh, and you yes, hear the drum line fun. and Absol the horns absolutely, and everybody having yes. a grand old time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It would. Uh, it's it, uh, a Friday night. It's just. It's. It's hard to pick, you know, it wouldn't it'd be unfair to any group to pick one over the other, but it is uh, just, it's a, the environment is just so joyous. It's just people having a good time. We appreciate you uh, joining us here on a uh, live uh, video stream. And uh, if you're over in Tokyo, we give you a pass, but you know, if you're in the area, these kids would love to see you in the, uh, in, in the bleachers and uh, you're missing out on some great fun uh, at a, a Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night uh, football game. Uh, basketball season uh, coming around, volleyball uh, going into the playoffs. But if you get a chance, get yourself in the bleachers and uh, show these kids uh, some support. Saucedo going for it on fourth down. A screen pass to Molina makes the initial defender miss and charges ahead for a first down. So that'll do it because the Jefferson Mustangs can no longer stop the clock. And just to wrap that up a little bit, you're right. There's so many good parts of high school football. I guess the football's a pretty good part as well, but there's just something about the band you gotta, when you, you walk in. you got to rank the football up there near the top. Ah, yes. Uh, but uh, maybe a three-way tie. And, of course, the uh, dance teams, uh, Lassos and the Lariats, uh, the Lariats from uh, Jefferson uh, Mustang, uh, uh, world famous, actually, the Lassos are, and the award-winning uh, Golden Dancers from Harlandale, the cheerleaders uh, at Harlandale, led by uh, Christine Lackey. It's just an all-around happy time it's victory formation happy time for the indians for sure as they line themselves up in victory formation they'll have to snap the ball one more time and that was it they're under 40 seconds they won't have to snap again so we can put this one in the win column of the harlandale indians the harlandale indians have secured a playoff bid and uh, they will be going to the playoffs they've secured a playoff bid uh, going to postseason uh, the opponents are 13 uh, for a 13 5 a d2 uh, will be their by district opponents and that's a a, a, a district to play some high level uh, football it's vets memorial it's tyvee it's uh, lockhart it's uh, piper i believe is over there and uh, it's gonna, it's going to be uh, it's going to be some great playoff uh, football. The Indians, congratulations to the Harland Indians uh, for securing uh, the bid uh, for securing the bid to the playoffs. Of course, next week the Frontier Bowl on Saturday on Saturday night at seven o'clock at Memorial Stadium. The Harland Indians and the uh, McCollum Cowboys. I believe it's the uh, 60th edition of the uh, Frontier Bowl and. Uh, we can't wait to watch that as well. The Jefferson Mustangs will uh, finish out uh, their season against the Edison Golden Bears. That's always a good game. It's a Tommy Bowl. Thomas Edison 
Thomas Jefferson. They call that the Tommy Bowl. So we wish uh, all four teams in, uh, involved in the uh, Tommy Bowl and the Frontier Bowl all the best. Uh, we are going to get into the uh, Martinez and Associates uh, postgame show. When we come back, we're going to talk about our players of the game. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check. Sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> Woo! Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running. Hire Martinez and Associates. Introducing a new era in real estate investment. The JLM Real Estate Investment Team offers fast, simple solutions for distressed properties. Perhaps you've inherited a troubled property or you have fallen behind on payments or you don't have time to hassle with repairs. The JLM approach is built on ethics, understanding, and empathy. Jacob and Lisette Martinez promise you a hassle-free experience. Call them today. And we bring you back to Alamo Stadium. This is the Martinez and Associates uh, post-game show. Uh, Brian and I are going to visit about the uh, players of the game. And I think on the uh, on the screen you might see uh, number 12. That's Robert Acuna, who we think had an exceptional defensive game. And he is our defensive uh, player of the game. We uh, congratulate Robert Acuna on his uh, selection. How about offensively, uh, Brian? Lot to choose from. So much to choose from when you have 47 points on the board. You know, you got contributions from everyone offensively, but we cannot look past the effort of number 81, Michael Palomino, came into tonight with seven touchdowns, but he can earn his way into double digits now. He had three tonight, and big play after big play makes him the offensive player of the game. So we congratulate uh, Robert Acuna, defensive player of the game. Uh, uh, the, he's a senior a defensive back, and number 81, Michael. Michael Palomino, still only a junior, a wide receiver, had an excellent game. Michael Palomino and Robert Acuna are, are Martinez and Associates defensive and offensive uh, players of the game. This is Robert Villafranca alongside Brian Yansel, uh, Yanselman. Uh, 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 enjoyed your enjoyed your show, uh, enjoyed your call so much, Brian, and uh, look forward to our next uh, visit together. Isabella Tejas was at the uh, at the tech table. And uh, Sebastian Castro, of, of course, catching uh, the moments uh, on the video screen. Uh, RC Audio Sports here tonight. We'll be back uh, tomorrow night from the SAISD Sports Complex. And from Memorial Stadium, weather permitting, uh, weather permitting from Memorial Stadium, it's Brackenridge and, and McCollum and Houston and Highlands from SAISD Sports Complex. The Memorial Stadium game on RC Audio Sports and the uh, Houston Highlands game on RC Audio Sports 2. Again, Robert Villafranca alongside Brian Yanselson, who did a great job calling the game tonight. Isabella Teas at the tech table. Sebastian Castro on the cameras. Great job. Enjoyed the game. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We wish you all a good night. We'll see you down the road. Hi, I'm from your local insurance agency. So sorry to hear about your accident. Here's a check. Sign this. We just signed with Martinez and Associates. <laughs> you know this isn't enough. Sign. Oh! <gasps> <gasps> Come on, baby. It's a mistake to go against the auto insurance companies all alone. Just like it's a mistake to go against UTSA All-American linebacker Trey Moore. Voted the best law firm in San Antonio three years running.